Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are San Diego. Last night, Travis Jankowski, a two-run double. Jed Jerko, a walk-off winner. And tonight, the Giants counter with Mad Bum. It's game three of the series. Jericho's first ever walk-off base hit comes on his 27th birthday. Down the clubhouse today, as he was taking some extra swings, I said, Happy birthday, Jed. Pretend it's your birthday again. How about another four-for-four day for the Padres infielder? And they're set to go. The rubber game of the three-game series with Mark Grant, Dick Enberg. Welcome to Petco Park for the final game between these two teams. Exciting game last night. It was a great game, and uh, that's why baseball is the best reality show on TV because so many things changed in the eighth and ninth inning. It was exciting. Everybody went home happy. Well, Jed Jerko is first uh, time going four for five and also the game winner. And tonight he'll have to try to solve the left-handed slants of Madison Bumgarner. Yeah, he's tough, let's face it. And also Ian Kenny can be tough as well. If he's on his game. So when you look at Madison Bumgarner this season versus the Padres, the last three, the record 2 0, but the previous start 0 1. And look at the run differential and the opponent's batting average. Remember going to that game back in April, Dick, April 11th? The one thing about Bumgarner is that he threw some mistakes and the Padre hitters capitalized. If he threw one down the middle of the plate, they hit it for a base hit or an extra base hit. It was a mechanical issue. Bumgarner figured that out, and then he's been pretty darn good the rest of the year. So, but the, the, the bottom line is here, they can get to this guy. The way they're swinging the bats, if they can crush some mistakes, hopefully they can get to him early tonight. He gives up twice as many runs on the road as he does at home, but remember, only four outs away from pitching a no-hitter just two weeks ago up at AT&T Park. Well, how about the Padres uh, throw out Steelers? I mean, he'd be good with a police badge, Derek Norris. You don't steal on this man. Scrap Iron is with Chris Button when we come back.
Derek Norris add on another one in the second inning gets Tomlinson caught stealing just part of Derek Norris's game. You know, when he was acquired by the Padres in that trade, there was a lot of speculation. Oh, this guy's not very good at defense. Runners, runners run on him all the time. Well, he put a stop to that literally and figuratively. Now up to 38. It's the most in all of baseball and the most by a major leaguer since 2009. Talking to Padres manager Pat Murphy, he said he took some of that a little personally. I think he took everything personal and he decided to come back and improve that part of his game, and he has. I mean, he's, he's, um, his release is very good, his accuracy is very good, and um, his footwork is very good, and um, he's committed to letting people know that he can throw people out. Maybe he can tack on a few more numbers today as they go battling against Bumgarner. We've seen his stuff and how effective he can be. Perhaps the Padres come up with some late heroics again. Game three coming up. Baseball brought to you by Betco. What we feed them matters. By Sony's Action Cam. Prove yourself. And by RCP Block and Brick. Start your outdoor project at RCPBlock.com. Another beautiful baseball night. The Padres have taken the field. Ian Kennedy will tow the rubber tonight against the San Francisco Giants. Slim Hope still alive for the Giants. They trail. The Dodgers at the start of today's play by seven full games. Time running out. They have 11 to play. 80 degrees as we await the first pitch here at beautiful Petco Park. And a look at the Giants lineup brought to you by Hyundai. Much like Bruce Bochy's uh, order last evening, with one exception down the bottom of the order Pagan Diaz, Duffy Posey, Crawford, then Bird, and Tomlinson. And then Kevin Franson, a well traveled infielder. In the minor leagues all season long picked up by the Giants as a minor league free agent and he starts at first base. He was with the Padres a couple of years ago in spring training and Madison Bumgarner maybe the best hitting pitcher in baseball. You could argue that hitting ninth and Ian Kennedy the veteran right hander on the mound. We mentioned in our pregame show how the last nine he's pitching very well. Great numbers and uh, he goes up the ladder so getting ahead early and if he has his secondary pitches working tonight folks. He's got three ways to go about it. the change of the curveball or the high fastball for Ian Kennedy. It's brought to you by Montalvo. And now the Padres defense brought to you by your San Diego County Ford dealers with Justin Upton in left, brother Melvin in center, and Matt Camp in right. 
The middle of the infield has Barmas at short and Jerko back to second base. At the corner, Spangenberg and Will Myers at first base and Norris behind the plate. So Spangenberg moves over to third. Jan Solarte, it's not a serious hamstring, but and he wanted to play. He campaigned uh, with his coaches and manager Pat Murphy to get in the lineup. They said, no, just rest it another night. You don't want it to be, uh, become a serious injury and then lose you the rest of the year. That's a smart move, I think. So Kennedy ready to go to work as he seeks his ninth win of the year. You know, it's almost like Ian Kennedy. Remember earlier in the year, Dick, he had that little twinge in his hamstring. No reason to, to press it. You know, you, you'd rather take maybe a start off rather than a month and a half off. Veteran Joe West, the crew chief, calling balls and strikes with Danley Rayburn and Surewater on the bases. Angel Pagan against Kennedy hasn't had much luck, just 195. A right hander from Huntington Beach, California, rocks into motion and we're underway. And the first pitch is fouled away. Pagan, not a home run hitter yet in this month of September, has hit two of his three against the Padres. Still some splashes of sunshine along the infield, middle of the infield. Makes it a little tricky for that second baseman, especially uh, Jerko when he charges the ball. I like the 6-10 start. What do you uh, think? Well, you like the early games. Yeah. yeah we, we like day action, and it's still daytime. Foul. Pagan, one of his three home runs against Ian Kennedy up in San Francisco as he found Levi landing in right field. Yeah, it was a breaking ball, a curveball. So uh, believe me, that goes in the scouting report. Big looping breaking ball over the plate for a strike, speeds up his bat. Kennedy's home run total, he's allowed 29 this year. Line drive, fair ball into the left field corner. Justin Upton plays the carom and coasting into second base with a double. Angel Pagan. Well, we talked about Ian Kenny going up the ladder with the fastball, and this is a fastball. It's up outer third, and uh, we've seen a lot of left-handers do that recently. No use trying to pull that ball when it's up and away. You do that, it's going to be you're going to work underneath it, maybe hit a fly ball. But uh, he went with that pitch perfectly for his 19th double. Alejandro Dianza hitting second. He's batting 261 over in the American League. Last with Boston. As a giant, 255 with only one RBI. A couple of walks last night for Diaz. It's been a bad pattern here of late for the Padres, giving up runs in the first inning. And Kennedy facing a tough situation here. Man at second, no one out in the. Big hitters coming up after Diazza. That's in there. 0-2. 92 on the fastball. Well, that first pitch tells you a lot. Alejandro Diazza gets the first pitch fastball right down the middle. He can't connect with it, so go right back for the call strike and talk about early runs. High pitch counts in the first inning and try to stay away from the early runs. Kennedy getting a call on that last pitch and he strikes out Diazza one away. Brings up Matt Duffy. Good pitch, bad hack. Diazza doesn't know which way to go. There's the knuckle curveball out of the hand of Ian Kennedy, the spike curveball. You ever throw that? I tried it, but I couldn't control it, Dick. I had to have both fingers on the baseball to stay on top. Uh, and it's tough because you use those fingers for the snap yeah. and to get that rotation. Yep. Then they have the knuckle on, take some of that away, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Drive to center field, and it's at Melvin Upton, but comes in on one hop. And on to home goes Pagan. They relay it, and they get him. Pagan hesitated at third. Upton's throw cut off by Myers, and Myers relays it in time to nail Pagan at the plate. Ron Wattis, the bench coach, on the horn. So let's go back to the pitch. It's fisted to center field. Now the race is on. And you know what? Pagan really took a weird route he around did. third base. And on the cut, a strike. Oh, very close. 
He's letting the runner have the lane. Where's the tag? And looks like he got him. Kind of tough to tell. Got him on the heel. Yeah. Watch the back heel. That's from that angle. Of course, you're blocked. You know, that front foot isn't even close. It's well See, off the ground. Here's where, when I'm commissioner, the clock is on and it's already too much time. I talked to Bruce Bochy and Pat Murphy about uh, the whole challenge situation today, and they gave me some nice insights. And I'm going to come up with my uh, suggestions for yeah. baseball. On uh, you won't be here. You're going to take the weekend off, so you can tune in. Okay. The pre-game I'll show on, TV on Saturday. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to resolve all the baseball Perfect. problems. Perfect. We're going to have nice, tight, short games. We're not going to delay for all these challenges. Nice. And yet we're still going to have a terrific game. It's a better game. It's a know? two for one deal. Everybody's going to be happy. You know what's happened, however, in talking uh, with Bruce Bochy is the players now have become so accustomed to anything close being reviewed that if you don't review it, then they feel you're not supporting them. Mm, interesting. Isn't that an interesting age? Yes, it yeah. is. We've spoiled them. Yeah. In the old days, you were out safe. Gee, I thought it was safe at second on that slide. Too bad. You're out. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're not going to call Aunt Martha and see if she liked it. Here's a throw from the knees by Norris into center field. And Duffy, rather, will uh, hold at second base with a stolen base. That almost looked like a delayed steal of some type of uh, sort there. Let's take a look. No, straight steal from Duffy. Now the throw. It just rushed it a little bit. It's an important steal for Duffy to get to 10 on the season because he places him as a rookie into a elite category of players that have 10 steals, 70 runs scored, and 70 RBIs in their rookie season. Meanwhile, two outs to Posey. He fouls that away. Look at this turn by Pagan. Okay, it's the center field. He checks it. Now he go, look at how wide he's going. Now he's got to go exit stage left. And it's almost like he takes a 90 degree angle in back of third base. He's got all that way to catch up. And I'll tell you what, Melvin Upton Jr. And the relay, the throw to the plate, perfect, a, perfectly executed. A really alert play by Myers. It sure was. To be able to up at the mound, cut that off and uh, relay it on for the out. But what does that tell you? Hit your cutoff man in the chest, in the head. They could always yell to let it go through or cut it like they did on that play. Ground ball up the middle, and there's Barmas to glove and throw out Posey. So a double and a single and a stolen base for the Giants, but no score. Here come the Padres, bottom of the first. Pitches like a 10 year veteran. A walk off win, and the Padres have a hard earned victory. Hard earned and well earned, 5 to 4 last night. As we get ready for the bottom of the first inning, the Padres come up for the first time against Madison Bumgarner with this lineup brought to you by Toyota. Myers to lead it off, Corey Spanchenberg. 
inserted when uh, Solarte unable to get the go because of that hammy injury. Matt Kemp and Justin Upton, Jed Jerko, the star last night on his birthday. Then Derek Norris hitting seventh, Melvin Upton Jr. Clint Barmas has had good success against Bumgarner, so he's in the lineup. And then Ian Kennedy. And the 26 year old left hander making his 31st start. His scouting report is brought to you by UCSD Health. Well, we know that he locates the fastball very well. He's not that overpowering. He's firm with that fastball. And he's got that back foot slider as well, along with the cutter, slider, change up, curveball. Like most outstanding pitchers, of which uh, certainly Bumgarner is one, you want to get to him early. Early. Yes. Hit the mistakes. Pitches up in the zone for strikes. Go to Hacken. Myers starts it. Takes ball one. Bumgarner is eight and five lifetime as you look at Myers' numbers. Shortened by the fact he missed a couple of months of action with that wrist surgery. Bumgarner's eight and five against the Padres in his career. Two and one this year. They beat him here in April. Knocked him out in three innings. And then he's come back to win the last two decisions, including that one hitter complete game in San Francisco on September 12th. Spins one inside, two and one. Now there's that breaking ball that he'll throw to the back foot with two strikes and try to entice hitters to swing over the top of it. Let's see if he can get on for Corey Spangenberg, who's on deck. That's a strike two and two. So Bumgarner is 18 wins. He's won nine at home nine on the road, but the ERA is significantly different at home a 1.80 ERA on the road over four. ERA. And a full count to Myers. Boy one of those conundrums one of those. Questions that's really tough to answer because we know the stuff of Madison Bumgarner when you look at his overall numbers, but what a difference in that ERA and the hitter's opponent's batting average. Fortunately, on the road, he's gotten good support from his offense, so he has the same number of wins. Three and two. Ground ball left side. Crawford across. And there's one away. The Giants defense brought to you by David and Goliath for California Lottery. Diaz in left, Pagan in center, Bird in right field. On the infield, there's Crawford, the outstanding shortstop. Tomlinson, the young second baseman, with Bird and Franson at the corners. Posey behind the plate, and Bumgarner on the mound. Spangenberg checks in at 266. The Dodgers have already won the day game this afternoon against Arizona, six to three. The time running out on the Giants, faint hopes of catching LA. Watch out! Back into the lower deck, deep back in a hurry. Yeah, I talked to Bruce Bochy yesterday in his office, and he said hoping to get to the Dodgers when they play them. They got four less left against the Dodgers to maybe get within three or four. And we know Bruce Bochy, Dick. He's going to manage every game. Like it's the last one that's uh, from elimination, right? That's the way it should be. Yep. One and one. Pittsburgh won a day game up at Coors Field, five to four over Colorado this afternoon. Well, they swept that four game series, the Buckos in Denver. They've won 93 games this year, yeah. Mark. 93 and 60. I, you know, Dick, I still think they're the best rounded team. When you know every team has their deficiencies, I think the Pirates are, are one of the most well-rounded teams that that, we, that I've seen this year in the National League. Another final this afternoon: Texas beat Oakland five to four. So Will Venable getting closer and closer to the playoffs. Yeah. And Spanchenberg spoils another. Count stays at one and two. You know St. Louis has that rotation. They've got that pitching, but. Uh, very few runs scored. They win games by pitching and bullpen. Uh, but the Pirates, they're, they're pretty well rounded.
Good layoff, two and two. Now talking about the National League Central, here's a look at the standings. Entering play tonight, St. Louis with a three and a half game lead with Pittsburgh winning. Cubs are seven back. Pittsburgh and Chicago on their way to the wild card at the moment. And a full count. So Myers took Baumgartner to three and two, and so does Spangenberg. Matt Camp would be next. Chop foul. Dick, you made a good point of getting to Baumgartner early because when we take a look at the Fox tracks, really kind of all over the map. Hopefully, for the pottery standpoint, when you look at the, the Fox tracks, everything's all over the place, and then a pitch right down the middle. Those are the ones you need to capitalize on there. And he gets him with a breaking ball. First strikeout for Bumgarner. How about our keys to the game, Mark Grant? Brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Well, I kind of use the time machine on this one. Back to the future. In reference to that April 11th outing that Bumgarner got knocked around. Three innings, ten hits, five earned runs. Hopefully the Padres can do that tonight. And turn back the clock to April. Remember in April, the Padres won 10 of their first 15 games. So hopefully they can have that mode tonight as we go down the stretch and see the finish line here against the Giants. Base is empty, two outs to Matt Kemp. A couple of hits on his birthday, 31st birthday last night, and his double in the ninth inning came around to score the winning run on Jerko's birthday base hit. Shift on. One ball, one strike. Three student body left. All by himself over there at first base is Kevin Francis. Almost straight away in the outfield, as you can see. You know what else, Dick, is another interesting nugget about Madison Bumgarner. This is his 31st start. 30 starts prior to tonight. He's only had two times where he's walked three hitters. All the other times, fewer than three walks. He didn't allow, allow a walk in that one hitter. You know, only faced 28 men, right? Up north. Yep. And a swing and a miss, strike three. A couple of strikeouts for Mad Bum. And the Padres go in order in the first inning. Tough to read his stuff. He just slings it up there. Right three.
now it's time to have some fun. It's time now for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. I love that term. We'll get Solo that stanza. Yeah. Huh? Use the hashtag SD Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself an upcoming broadcast brought to you by our good friends at T Mobile. Yeah, at the end of another beautiful San Diego day. As we go to work in the top of the second inning, it'll be Brandon Crawford leading off for the Giants. 19 home run season, his best ever. And he drills that to deep center field. A long run from Melvin Upton, and it is gone. <laughs> Kennedy has coughed up his 30th home run of the season, and Crawford is rounding the bases with number 20. What a season for the former UCLA star. Well, as a pitcher, you want to get ahead. You want to try to locate the fastball. And Brandon Crawford, he's probably got to the back of his mind. If I get that heater, especially down the middle, he is going to go to swing. And he does just that. First pitch, fastball hunting, and he squares it up. Once again, the opponents strike first. That ball just too sweet for Crawford's swing. 20 home runs, 81 runs batted in for the shortstop. Here's Marlon Byrd combining his Cincinnati totals with those in San Francisco. 22 home runs for him. Second baseman Jerko moves over to the shortstop side, leaving only Myers to guard the right side. You know, with the way Crawford's been swinging the bat lately, prior to that at bat, just eight hits in his last 55 at bats. It's a 145 average. And sometimes I think hitters, when they're in that type of slump, they see that first pitch fastball. They're gonna they're gonna go swing it, and that's exactly what he did. One and two to Bird. And Ian Kennedy counters to Marlon Bird with some off-speed stuff. 16 home runs allowed in 201 innings last season. 30 this year. And some uh, almost 42 less innings pitched. Meanwhile, Crawford enjoying a good series. He had a RBI single, two for four in game one. He was two for four again last night, a single, drove in two runs, and a double. Five hits in the series. And four runs batted in. Hit. Oh my bird. It's a hitting machine. That's the way he was stroking the ball up in San Francisco. You know, I remember Marlon Bird some at bats, especially up in San Francisco in this series. He really did well when thrown a fastball, and that pitch right there looked like down and in. Whether that was a four seam fastball, maybe a hot changeup, kind of tough to tell there. Velocity was 83, so a changeup, kind of speeding up the bat of Marlon Bird, just dropping that head down and in. Just bad location on that changeup, just caught too much of the plate. Kelby Tomlinson, the young second baseman. So Kennedy was lucky to duck out of that first inning without a run scoring. A double, a single, and a stolen base. And here, a home run and a single to open the second. Clearly see that change up grip from Ian Kennedy on that last hit from Marlon Byrne. And Dave Rigetti, the pitching coach on the right, and Crawford uh, obviously in a good mood after hitting his 20th. Fly ball, it's going to fall into left center field, not hit that hard, but drops for a single. Three straight hits here for the Giants in the second. Bird holds up at second, and Tomlinson has. A base knock. Well, just catching too much of the plate. And when you flip a breaking ball up there, you speed up the bat of a guy like Tomlinson, and it catches too much of the plate, and that's what happens. And a good time for Darren Ballsley to come out and just have a little chat with Ian, settle him down a little bit. Veteran Kevin Franson is going to be the hitter. Called up from the AAA Farm Club in Sacramento earlier with Reno. 
with the Oakland A's. Franson. A reminder our closed captioning for tonight's game is always brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. You know, the visit by Darren Ballsley, it comes at a good time because what a pitching coach tries to tell a pitcher in this type of situation is concentrate on one certain type of pitch to roll one pitch to get two outs. Try to get a grounder on the infield early. Hey, you get the two strikes, then you can go for the punch out. The well traveled Franson started his professional career with the Giants 11 years ago. They drafted him in the 12th round. This season in the minors hit 280 with four homers. He's a survivor, isn't he, Dick? Yeah, he is. Remember, he was in spring training yeah. with the Padres about three years ago. Yeah. Keep battling. Don't give up the dream. Hey, the phone keeps ringing. They keep issuing you a uniform and giving you a job. Play a boys game and you get a paycheck too. <laughs> yeah. Manager Bochi in his ninth season. It's been a tough year for him. The injury rate for the Giants has been extraordinarily high. Good backhand by Norris. 2 and 0 oh as Kennedy with two on, no one out, and a run in on Crawford's homer falls behind. Hunter Pence, one of those uh, sideline, and such a key player. Well, Mike Leak acquired from the Reds the, on the right there, key arm in the rotation for the Giants. Leak will be pitching in the next series. Oh, Ian really off here to uh, Kevin Franson. The Giants go back to the Bay Area for a weekend series against the Oakland A's at Oakland and league pitches tomorrow night. Three and oh. The pitcher Madison Bumgarner next but he's not an ordinary hitting right. pitcher. He is terrific. That's a 92 mile an hour strike. Three and one. And that's an adjustment for me and Kennedy. Three down and away. It's not a good sign. Audrey Samur Despagne yeah. already getting those legs limber. Hey, hitters count here. Try to avoid the sweet spot. Get a ground ball. Take your chances. And look at Darren Ballsy watching intently with every pitch. Ground ball could be two. Barmas drops the ball, gets one back to first. They still turn the double play. Barmas quick reaction and Jerko with a strong relay. 6 4 3 double play. That's what I'm talking about, Ian Kennedy. It takes one pitch. To turn a potential mess into a potential bagel up on the scoreboard. Look at Jerko's turn on that transfer. Barmas on the front end, hot potato. Jed Jerko, get rid of it. Don't burn yourself. Get it out of that hand. 6 4 3, yo. And they completed it two strides before Franson arrived. Yeah. So here's the pitcher, Bumgarner. Bird over to third on the double play. Get around Bumgarner and out of this inning, and that's a, a victory of sorts for the Padres. Mm -hmm. The Giants score only one run on five hits in the first two innings. Bumgarner with five homers this year. He has 11 career home runs. Yeah. And that's why he takes a big swing. He does not get cheated. Most home runs by pitcher this year. Bumgarner with five. Grinky and Leak both with two. Five different Giants pitchers have hit home runs this year. Nine total. With uh, Bumgarner way up on the top of the list. And a foul tip. One and two. You know we've heard of pitchers grunting when they pitch. I think I heard Madison Bumgarner. Kind of grunt a little bit on that swing. Country boy from Hudson yeah. and Hickory, North Carolina. That's a country swing there. One and two. 
He's off the slider. Ian Kennedy always sets up with that changeup grip and then adjusts accordingly. Derek Norris putting down the one fastball away. Strike three call. Caught the inside corner. Bumgarner caught looking. Second strikeout for Kennedy. Gives up a home run. Brandon Crawford, but pitches around a couple of singles thanks to a double play. Lower arm slot, and he's got he's got he's got three or four really good pitches. So that's that's what makes him really tough. He, he commands well. You just gotta you try to jump on him as early as you can. You gotta, try to get to him early. Try to get him out of the game as fast as we can. Jed Jerko talking about facing Madison Bumgarner, which he has done a lot in his career with the Padres, and talking with pan manager Pat Murphy about it. He said, you know, his stuff is deceiving, but it's not just his stuff. It's his demeanor. It's his confidence. It's the way that he takes the mound every fifth day and you can just rely on him to go out there and give you the same performance every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah thanks Chris and of course that uh, 20 win season is an, his target his focus that's uh, so tough to do these days. Arietta the Cubs has accomplished the 20 win season and Bumgarner has this start and if he needs it two more to try to get to 20. Justin Upton one of the few to have a 300 plus batting average against Baumgartner. You know why I think that is and this is just from watching Justin Upton swing the bat and the type of pitcher Baumgartner is. He's got such a short quick compact swing that he can get to that inside pitch. Baumgartner's bread and butter is one of those pitches fastball in breaking ball down and in. And I think Justin's swing is accommodating to that type of pitch. That's one reason why I would think you'd see those good numbers. One and two. Upton, Jerko, and Norris for the Padres, bottom of the second. Giants with the early 1 nothing lead. Good layoff of the two last breaking balls as well in the zone. Out of the zone, I should say. Jerko, four for five last night. Another ball in the dirt at the feet of Upton, and it's the third full count. Baumgartner and four batters.
Did he go? No. Oh. Hey, tonight on Aztec football with Rocky Long, experience the traditional warrior walk from the player's perspective, plus a look back at Marshall Falk's appearance in the Daily Aztec. Coach Long gives his expert analysis on Saturday's matchup against Penn State, the Nittany Lions. Tonight after Padres Live right here on Fox Sports San Diego. Chris, Chris Budd does such a great job on that show. Outstanding. Yeah, Chris will be off doing her football assignment this weekend. She's very upset. She sit, looked at the schedule. Here's Jerko. And uh, Central Michigan's at Michigan State. She wanted the game. Yeah. Well, she'd have been great. Like, had a couple of notes for her and everything. Well, she'd be rooting for the chips. Yeah, I think she's got Wyoming State and New Mexico School of Turquoise. <laughs> Saturday. That's a tough game to get oh, to. It's tough, though. No major yeah. airports to get to. I know, but it's going to be close. One and one. Actually, she has a very good game. TCU at Texas Tech. Oh, nice. Horn Frogs, to, uh, Red Raiders, right? Yeah, and I think TCU is like number three in the nation. Line drive, and Jerko continues his hot hitting. There goes the no hitter tonight. Took the Padres until two outs in the eighth inning in San Francisco before Melvin Upton as a pinch hitter at a base hit. Short, quick to the baseball. What does Bumgarner throw up there? Looks like a little cutter. And once again, mistakes up in the zone. He wanted that down and away. And Jed Jerko answers back with a safety to left. And the Padres' first two base runners on. The leadoff walked up. Then now Jerko single brings up Derek Norris. Norris, uh, RBI away from the 60 mark. Strike one. Last 44 games, Derek Norris getting at a nice 288 pace. And he's got six for 20 against Bumgarner. An amazing dick how beat up he gets, but still puts together good at bats and good results. It, it, it truly is remarkable. He's like the fighter that takes all those punches, the bell rings, goes, sits on the stool, slumps there, and then the bell rings, and he's up like he's never been hit once. <laughs> yeah. This foul ball gets Posey off the right shoulder pad. You see that little added extension there still, though. That's smarts on the old soup bone. Coming in hot. Almost walked into that pitch. Norris looking for something away. Giants lead here in the second inning on the solo homer by Brandon Crawford. Justin Upton leading off with a walk here in the second, a single jerko. Padres endeavor to come right back. They're five and four against the Giants on the season at Petco, but overall the Giants lead 11 7 in the series. And this will wrap it up for the year. Right center field and hit well. Bird going back, back, and it's gone. Derek Norris touch them all. A three-run shot for Norris, and the Padres claim the lead, three to one. Number 14 for the Padre catcher. Derek Norris going opposite field. Let's see the pitch. It's a breaky ball. He stays on it. Look at the back end of the swing. Drop the head out that side and just drive it that way. That's hitting the sweet spot. Oh, he usually doesn't carry like that to right field, but Norris got all of it. So three men reach base here in the second. A walk, a single, and a three-run shot. Derek Norris and the Padres lead against Bumgarner three to one. 
Melvin Upton Jr. Two hopper to the third baseman Duffy. And one away. Brings up Clint Barmas. It's a good season then. 14 homers, 62 RBIs yes. for Derek Norris. And I always take into consideration, I'll re reiterate what I just said, for a catcher to get beat up like that and still swing the shillelagh like Derek Norris did. He's a gamer. Oh, yeah. Barmas batting 244. Three hundred to eighty one feet they measure the home run of Norris. Last year with Oakland he hit 270 Norris. With 10 homers. So he's had four more than the season ago. And he had 55 RBIs last year. Now with 62. Moved up in the power department as a Padre. And how about an eight spot? Eight points for Chris Budden in pick the stick. Whoa. And you led by 12 at the start. 11? Yeah. 11 at ah, the start. Three point game now. Uh oh. Don't she, call it a comeback. She is so good. I mean, even she falls behind, but you think, uh oh. There's plenty of time left. End. Yeah, it's a long season. <laughs> Swing and a miss, Barmas. And there's two away. That's a third strikeout for Bumgarner. Ian Kennedy will bat here in the second. He's four for 40 on the year. It's been a while for Derek Norris to touch them all. You have to go back almost six weeks. His last home run was uh, at Colorado. You know, I'll, I'll be quite honest with you. I knew that ball was hit well, but I really didn't think it was going to get out. But good for Derek Norris and the Padres taking the lead on one swing. Yeah, what do you know? You strap on the gear, now you go throw down some fingers and help your pitching staff. A weak swing from Kennedy, and he falls behind two strikes. But the Padres have made Bumgarner work. His 42nd pitch, and he has only five outs so far. So Kennedy giveth the home run and his catcher taketh a home run. And the breaking ball in there, strike three. Four strikeouts for Bumgarner. But after the walk to Upton and Jerko single. Derek Norris goes opposite field and drives it into the Jack deck and right. And the Padres have a three to one lead.
Uh, Ian Kennedy kind of worked himself into a little bit of a mess. It's a single there. It's a high breaking ball to Tomlinson there. Okay, so first and second. Visit from pitching coach Darren Balsley. Franzen, grounder. One pitch could tell the difference or make the difference in an inning. The called strike to Madison Bumgarner. Hey, that's working out of a mess. It's interesting. Uh, each team had the first three runners with uh, read safely. The home run by Crawford, the two singles. Giants get one run, but the Padres, first three reach, they all score on the three-run homer. As we look at our top-tier player profile, brought to you by Arco, his last nine home starts, and we mentioned he loves Petco. Five and two is Kennedy. So confidence and execution comes into a play when a pitcher's in a little bit of trouble. you got to convince yourself you can make that one pitch to get two outs, and that's exactly what he did. And against the Giants here at home, he's 3-0. and oh. Pagan doubled the left field but was stranded or actually thrown out at home plate in the first inning when Duffy singled the center and Pagan following the track of the ball didn't know if Upton and center was going to catch it and he took a big turn at third and a relay Upton to Myers at the mound to the plate and a tag out by Norris and he goes the other way again. Upton trying to cut it off. Pagan's going to go for two anyway. Here comes the throw, and he's in there. Back to back doubles by Pagan, just serving it to left field. He just paused a little bit on this pitch from Ian Kennedy. Just a, a scotch to let that ball travel a little bit, recognizing it and staying inside it nicely, just like before. Yeah, Kennedy again treading in dangerous waters. That's six hits already for the Giants. Yet only the one run on Crawford's home run. Diazza struck out swinging his first time. Got to be on the same page with Angel Pagan on second base with a series of signs. Certainly don't want to get crossed up here. Bunted foul. De Aza backwards is Aza Ed. There you go. Who knew? Aza <laughs> Ed. Ed. Aza <laughs> Ed, yeah. Aza. Aza Ed. So we're going to miss 0 and 2. What's Enberg backwards? Grebney. <laughs> oh, look at you answering back just like that. Yeah, Drecker. Richard Dracker Grebney. <laughs> Nala, middle name Nala. Tanar Cramp. Yeah, that's got a kind of Grant, a, yeah. Yeah, mysterious sound to it. The detective. What is it again? But you knew Tanar Cramp. You just didn't even speak skip a beat. Yeah, but we, yeah, we played that game. Our, Everybody our, did. Yeah, yeah. Not very exciting, Grebney. It sounds like something that that gnome would fall in love with, you know. The gnome? Yeah, Grebney and the gnome. You, you know? bring up the gnome, Chris Budden. Yeah, she's I knocking on the door. I did it purposely. Yeah, not just a teaser. She's really getting excited. I told you I can give up the lead with the best of them. And have another base hit. Pagan hesitates, but he makes a good turn this time at third and comes in to score. It's three to two. Kennedy having trouble getting the. Giants to make outs. Seven hits in two innings plus. Just missing with too much of the plate. Well, the left handed hitting Pagan, the switch hitter Pagan from the left side going the opposite way. Deaza pulling this baseball. He's got to freeze because from his vantage point, that line drive, he might be at the first baseman. He holds up, he scores easily. Well, Ian's got to make an adjustment. Three to two, the Padre lead. Matt Duffy. Singled and stole second his first time. And again, that double play ball would play big here. Padres help out Kennedy. 
Buster Posey moves into the on deck circle. Another hit. Piazza to third. They're waving him in and out with the breaks as they would have scored as second baseman Jerko didn't come up with a relay cleanly, but they didn't know that. And so second and third, no one out as Duffy has a couple of hits already. Wow. Going the opposite way on Kennedy. Yeah, on contact, that little slider or slash cutter just caught too much of the plate. So in the second inning, a home run Crawford leading off, then Bird and Tomlinson singled, but the double play bailed out Kennedy. Only one run scoring. Now here in the third, double, single, double. It's three to two. Second and third, no one out for Posey. Infield playing back. They'll give up a run for an out here. Against Ian Kennedy up in San Francisco. Plants that one back in the bleachers, does Posey. One of his 19 home runs this year. In the dirt, 2 0. First base open. Brandon Crawford, who homered his first time up, is next. Kennedy. Has had trouble throughout his career getting Posey out 386 for the giant catcher. Yeah, I think this next pitch is going to indicate what type of way they're going to go after Posey. Fastball in. Oh. Fastball down. So two hits in the first inning, a double in the single, a home run and two singles in the second, two doubles in a single here in the third, still no one out. Chase is there. Looks like a changeup. Two and two. Pitching backwards. Fastball count. E. Kennedy pulls the string. We know the key to that pitch there. It was right over the heart of the plate, but down. The bottom just drops out from under it. Boy, a punch out would be nice right here. Everything down. And so was that one, three and two. Moving his feet just a little bit. Outfield playing Posey to go the other way a little bit. You see Melvin Upton Jr. there on the first base side of second base. And set a huge gap in left center. Everything's been down. Diazza with the RBI single has moved around to third on the double by Duffy. No one out. Good pitch. Trying to jam them. Not let Buster Posey get those arms extended in this situation. Now Posey is very adroit at hitting the ball the opposite field, especially with two strikes. And that's what the Giants' game plan seems to be. Yeah, Pecan doing it twice. Duffy goes to right field with his double. Watch out into the second deck. Well, after that last pitch, Derek Norris out of the crouch to have a visit with his right hander. Very quick visit. So. Let's see if they even give a sign here because they've communicated. Right. They'll just go behind home plate, probably just go into, the, or he'll just give some decoy signs. But after a visit like that, you pretty much know what you want to throw. You've discussed it. See if Derek even puts down a sign. He just gave a fist at yeah. it to indicate yeah. just to, like he was given a sign. Swing and a miss, strike three. Another changeup. Big strikeout, number three from Kennedy. 
What a beauty for Ian Kennedy. After the discussion, hey, what do you think of a combio? Again, down the heart of the plate, but taking some off, and Buster's way out in front of it. That is a big pitch from Ian Kennedy. Love it. But out of the frying pan into the fire, as they say, as Crawford comes up after hitting a home run over the center field fence the last time. This is what I love about this game, Dick, and I know you like the pitcher batter matchup. Right. They're going to put him on here, but it blows my uh, my thought out of the window. I was wondering, first pitch fastball last time, if he hit the homer, what was Ian going to counter with? Was it going to be a breaking ball? But we'll have to wait and see because of the four wide ones. Play the percentages, get rid of the left handed hitter, take your chances with the right handed batting Marlon Bird, who singled his last time. Bases are loaded with Giants. Crawford jogs to first. Duffy at second. Diaz at third. Bird was one for four last night, struck out three times. And was one for four in game one of the series. So two for eight, and now with a hit tonight, three for nine. Again, the double play. Padres' best friend and the pitcher's best friend, and this could be it. Right at Jerko. To Barmas, back to first. A double play and picked nicely. Will Myers, good job. Yes, indeed, a couple of double plays for the Padres tonight. There's one. Now watch Myers on the pick. Looks like he got his foot back on the bag, pulled him off, and then he had to stab back at it. It remains 3 2 Padres. The mistakes of Madison Bumgarner. Look as we freeze this on contact to Jed Jerko. Middle away, elevated belt buckle. What is the result? Well, Jed Jerko is aboard with a single. How about against Derek Norris, the breaking ball? He stays back on it. Outer part of the plate. Derek Norris gets elevated just below the belt buckle and sends that one on its way for the home run. That's what you need to do with Madison Bumgarner. Take advantage of the mistakes. And the Padres still lead by a run. Look at that score line. Giants three runs. Or check that. Padres three runs, two hits. Giants two runs, eight hits. A couple of double plays saving Ian Kennedy as we go to the top of the order. And Will Myers grounded to short his first time. Myers, Spangenberg, and Kemp in the San Diego third. Looking for his first hit in the series, Myers. And there it is. No, nope. it's going to be caught by second baseman Tomlinson. Off the bat, looked like it might have enough oomph to drop it into shallow right field, but 
becomes an easy out. Spanchenberg struck out swinging the first time. Twelve games against the Giants. Spanchenberg, solid 286 average. I don't know about you, Mark, but today uh, after yesterday's announcement of the Yogi Berra's passing, and you know every newspaper, sports writer, sports caster talking about the Yogiisms, and, and just an abundance of emails today of friends and other other Yogiisms that we didn't use. That, right. I mean, it was just I've forgotten about the streaker Yogiism. I know, what's it was, that one? It was in spring training. In fact, we were. Uh, we were in Palm Springs with Don Drysdale at the time. Lined the left field but slicing foul. And it was back in the early 70s when streaking was uh, right. in vogue. Right. And, and five college kids during the baseball Yankee spring training game streaked. They got in in right field and ran all the way across the outfield to left field. And somebody asked Yogi, were they guys or were they girls? And Yogi said, don't know. They had bags over their heads. <laughs> Swing and a miss, Benjamin. <laughs> Five strikeouts now for Bumgarner. That's great. Tonight's game presented in HD by Sony 4K. Number 19, his presence always here at Petco. The other one I like was, I'm not buying my kids any encyclopedia. I'll let them walk to school just like I did. <laughs> <laughs> so he's remembered for those yogiisms, oh, yeah. but don't forget what a great, great player he was. Kemp struck out the first time and off speed out in front of that one. One of my favorites. He went to a pizza parlor. Yeah, we didn't use that one either. You did. He asked, uh, you know, how many pieces of large pizza, and they said eight. He goes, "Well, can you cut that into four? I don't think I can eat eight. <laughs> <laughs> Never answer an anonymous letter. He advised. <laughs> two strikes now to Kemp. Bases empty in the third. Padres lead 3 2. There you go. Barely able to check back. See, that's that pitch that is close enough to entice a hitter to swing. Matt Kemp lays off of it, but. It's not that when you bounce in front of home plate, it's just low enough, just out of the zone, and, and Bumgarner has that ability to do just that. High fly ball to center. Pagan has plenty of room. That was a night piercer. It finally comes down, and the Padres are gone in order in the third to the fourth. 3 2, San Diego.
Baseball, brought to you by Saquon Casino. Play, win, together in the heart of San Diego. By Mercury Insurance. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com and see how much you could save. And by Jerome's, proud sponsor of the best seats in the house. At Go Park in San Diego, three innings in the books. And the Padres with a 3 2 lead as Ian Kennedy goes to work. Bottom third of the order Kelby Tomlinson, Kevin Franson, and Madison Bumgarner. As he has been walking the tightrope and able to survive a couple of big innings, potential big innings of the Giants, thanks to the double play. Tomlinson singled the first time, he singles the second time. That's nine hits already. Ian Kennedy. Not fooling many hitters. So leadoff man on. All four innings. Back in the second, he wasn't on for long. Crawford Homer. Well, here's your double play guy that we were just talking about, Dick, back in that second inning. He worked a pitch down. Kevin Franzen hit it to short. 6 4 3. Mark Sweeney joins us here in the top of the third, as per usual. Always great to have his expertise. And a strike. So how about the home run to right field by Derek Norris? Impressive. Huh? That's the first time in his career he's gone an opposite field home Never run. Never hit it that way before? Well, he's a pull hitter. And we all know that. But perfect swing by Derek Norris, and that was good to see. He's come close all year. He's done a nice job trying to Work his swing the other way at times. It was a breaking ball in the outer half of the plate too, which was impressive as well. Usually when a guy squares one up opposite field, you know it's usually a fastball because the pitcher's supplying the power. But that was a nice swing by Derek. Yeah, so many times, guys, we talk about it backing the ball up. Well, you do that with your eyes, your vision, and it was a perfect swing by Derek Norris and nice three-run shot. Franson grounded into the six-four-three twin killing. And how about the relay from center field to Myers to get Pagan at the plate? He was bad base running on his part, but nevertheless, uh, Myers alert enough to be there to take the throw on the mound, cut it off, and come to the plate and deny a run would be a tie game. Otherwise, maybe worse. Yeah, Dick, to think about that, it's a difficult play for Will Myers because you have to have your head on a swivel, but you're you're looking to be in that right position. And there's so many new things that Will Myers has to think about from that first base position. But being in line with that relay throw and then also receiving it and having the knowledge of having to throw an accurate throw to Derek Norris. Nice, nice relay. Swing and events. That's that changeup and down goes Kevin Franson, one away. Well, if you look at the relay, again, it's an accurate throw from the outfield and hitting him in the chest. But you see that his back is exposed to Derek Norris in a nice, accurate throw on that third base side, allowing Derek Norris to apply that tag to Pagan. He throws to the plate, and then the runner's safe. But he throws up the third base line, leads it right into the slide. And how about Pagan's slide? The front foot not even close to hitting home plate on that. It was elevated off the ground. Here's Bumgarner. Took a third strike the first time. Whatever happened to the hook slide? Yeah, you, know, you don't see that very often anymore. The foul territory part. You know? And it's funny because to your point, Mark, and it's a really good point. At second base, you see so many of those slides where guys come off the base. At home, your your front foot is elevated because before they really wouldn't be replaying those. If you beat the throw, you beat the throw. They would say, you know, your front foot hit. It actually didn't. So those are some of the things moving forward that they're going to have to. Clean up a little bit. A little outside, two and zero. Oh. You see that front foot elevated. So the trail leg was farther away from home plate, which mm -hmm. gave Norris a chance to tag there and get the out. That's why I really think a lot of yeah. these base runners are head first sliding yeah. into home plate, which is very dangerous. Robbie Zenfield looking for another double play chance. Bailing out Kennedy in the second and again in the third. Outfield playing to go the other way there. Big gap in left center field. Three and oh. 
Been a struggle for Kennedy tonight. Only two runs, nine hits. You know, a lot of the pitches for me and Kennedy when he missed with the fastball, a lot of them have been down in this area here. To me, that means that he's, his arm isn't really catching up, and he, he's trying to get out in front a little bit too quickly when the body's rushing, and that's when you yank it. How about that? They green light the pitcher, 3-0. Yeah. Well, with five home runs on the year, why not? You know he's got the power. You know you're going to get a fastball. Yeah, let the big dog eat. There goes the runner and a sharp shot to third knocked down by Spangenberg. You'll get the out at first. That had a potential of a double play but with a runner going Spangenberg probably saw him out of his periphery. Couldn't feel the ball cleanly and settles for the 5 3 put up. Ball was hit hard. So two outs. Tomlinson at second. And the top of the order Pagan he's hit. A double and then a mirror double the next time up, both down the left field line. Trying run with two outs at second. Well, after Pagan, as you mentioned, they're going the opposite way two times tonight. See how Ian Kennedy throws him now, that runner at second base. You know, some of the things you got to worry about, guys, with Ian Kennedy and all pitchers, there's some veteran hitters on the Giants, so they'll pick out some tendencies. We've talked about it in the past, the tendencies that they have, certain pitches that they'll throw. And it looks like Pagan has been sitting on a particular pitch tonight. There's the weaker wave, so he's set up for something else and uh, can't hold back. You know, and they might they might have a tendency that you see maybe in the in the changeup, and he's swinging at the changeup. He's not swinging at location. Looks like he was swinging at that one right out of the hand. He was going to swing at that one no matter what it looked like. But we as hitters always tried to pick out some some tendencies of pitchers. We always talk about eliminating pitches, but that's how you do it, especially. When you don't have a lot of success, Pagan coming into this this matchup, not very good, but tonight two doubles. Sweeps that right to Myers for the final out here in the fourth. No damage done. Padres come up bottom of the fourth. They'll have Upton, they'll have Jerko, and they'll have Derek Norris. A three run shot is last time up. Nine to two, the Padres lead three to two as we look at our National University standings, peeking in on the American League wild card, a very contentious race over in the junior circuit. New York now a four and a half game lead, but Houston 
having a very dismal September and their lead is only one over Minnesota at the moment. The Angels lurking a game and a half back. Yeah, that Houston bullpen leaking oil big time. And we know how crucial bullpens are, especially this time of year down the stretch. Here's Upton and he follows it away. He walked leading off the second he was one of the two on board when Norris hit his opposite field home run. Well, the Mets won again tonight and the Nationals lost the Nationals. That's when we saw them just a month ago. They appeared to be in excellent position to make the playoffs. They're now seven and a half behind wow. the Mets. That'll make the seats down the right field side. The Rangers won again. They started. Uh, Tonight, three in front of Houston. Well, Justin, tonight I've noticed out of the hand of Bumgarner has really laid off those breaking pitches down out of the strike zone, not fishing for those. The one at the back foot, the one over the heart of the plate, down in the zone. Done a good job. Ball two strikes. Fastball away. Strike three called. That's a half dozen strikeouts now for Madison Bumgarner. Well, when you think about Madison Bumgarner, he makes you just aware of that inside part of the plate, opening that outside part. You see that cutting action, but it starts off the plate and comes in in a perfect pitcher's pitch. But that's what pitching inside will do for you, and especially for Madison. Jerko, a line single his first time and scored. Fastball in there. Look at that, right there at the knees. Well, there's a, a lot of hitters don't want to be exposed or, or be embarrassed on the inside part, especially with the fastball. And Madison Bumgarner, especially to right-handers, mm -hmm. that's his comfortable pitch. Interesting follow-up on the game-winning hit by Jerko. His first ever as a Padre, by the way, last night. The uh, that was the first walk-off on a birthday. In 13 years. And you're thinking about who that might be, I know. High drive, left center field, but not quite deep enough. Pagan able to get near the path for the second out. How about Sean Burroughs on his birthday 12 wow. years ago? He won wow. the game on a walk-off. Of Little League stardom, yeah. Sean yeah. Burroughs. Here's Norris going the opposite way with two men on. Really a good sign for Derek Norris, letting that ball travel and squaring this up. And that really feels good as a hitter when you're trying to work on so many things. We've seen singles and doubles the other way. Because as you see the percentage, not too much, and it's more on the pull side than anything else. And he goes the opposite field again. That's right down the line and a fair ball. Norris on his way for two. And another double for the Padres catcher. Home run double for Norris tonight. He made that look so easy, Mark Sweeney. Well, it's something that really comes into play, and he's committed to this approach against Madison Bumgarner. You can see the eyes, setting the eyes. Watch him track it all the way through to the barrel. It's a picture perfect swing going the other way. He relinquished the doubles lead on the club to Solarte last night when Solarte had a couple of doubles now has 33 so Norris for this 32nd tonight. Try to pick up a run here Melvin Upton grounded to third his first time. In there. Last four games junior four for nine. Was the 
Bad character up in San Francisco and fans didn't like him because in the eighth inning four outs away from a no hitter he came off the bench and singled the center field. The only hit the only base runner against Bumgarner at at and a clean single. Sell out crowd at at and with a salute to Bumgarner a magnificent performance. But one pitch away from the magical no hitter. You know what that is, Mark Grant, right? That's a big league hang with him. No doubt. <laughs> Nobody said this game was going to be easy. Kidding me? I loved it. I did too. It was awesome. I don't, I don't, I don't want to see our guys get no hit. No. Kidding me? It's not a good feeling. Two and one. Chop. That's good. If he runs hard, he might have a chance here. And he comes up a half stride short as Bumgarner hustled over. For the 3 1 put out, and Norris is stranded at second. Four innings complete at Petco. Padres, three, Giants, two. This date, September 24th, 2006, Padres' Trevor Hoffman closes out the Pirates, a 2-1 win, securing career save number 479, surpassing Lee Smith's total, making the 38-year-old Padre right-hander the all-time leader in saves. Number 51, Trevor Hoffman. Boy, that was an exciting time. Freddie Sanchez out of the box, tripping over his bat. And you know what? I think he was playing short then. Jeff Blum. the Blummer. Yeah, the Blummer. Love the Blummer. I do too. But how about Trevor Hoffman? You saw the bumblebee, the, the little floating changeup, oh, yeah. and then the fastball, and then ending it with his signature pitch, <laughs> the changeup, in on the pause. That was sweet. Fifth inning, and once again Pagan leading off as he has all three times tonight. You know, I'm Check gonna, that. This is a uh, Diazza leading off. I'm going to editorialize a little bit here because I think the guy has been shortchanged. Lee Smith's record stood for so long. I think Lee Smith Hall of Fame. should be in the Hall of Fame. I do too. So that's what becomes worrisome for Trevor, who's el eligible for the first time this year. Mm -hmm. that Lee Smith didn't get in. Now, yeah. how will the baseball writers treat Trevor Hoffman? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think Trevor Hoffman's a no-brainer. Because of the history of the closer position not getting in for so many times, that's the reason why they're saying Trevor might not be on the first ballot. I think that's a joke. Yeah, well, uh, Mark Grant has another theory, too. Yeah, I'm thinking that with the uh, retirement of Mariano Rivera, since he has the most, although Trevor did get to 600 first and break. Driven into right field, another hit. This is Diaz on his way to second base. And will hold there on a double. Oh, a hit parade against Kennedy tonight. The leadoff man has reached safely all five innings, and the tying run aboard with no one out here in the fifth. 
So with Mariano Rivera, will the Riders want to wait until he is eligible to put him in before anybody else in that role? I have right along with you, Mark Sweeney. Breaking Lee Smith's record, the first one to 600. To me, it's a no-brainer as well for it's, Trevor. It's every individual case, and that's the way I look at it too. I mean, was he dominant in his era? Yeah, in that's, his, and that's really the prerequisite absolutely. right from the get-go, and Trevor was that. So Diaz with his second hit. A double, and he represents uh, the tying run out at second base. Okay. Well, we're all pulling for Hoffman. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be there, and I want to be there first to stand up and applaud. Remember Trevor telling me with his thumb on the Rawlings R, pinch the R. And that's how he throws change up. You'll see pictures stills of him with his fingers up off the ball on the change up. I thought he was giving the victory sign up on top there. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> that's you. Listen, I've been a teammate of his. He's a tremendous teammate. Battled against him. Got embarrassed against him. But you understand the consistency that Trevor Hoffman brought to what he had to do in his craft. Mm -hmm. Really sets him apart from a lot of people that do that, including the Craig Kimbrells, the Houston Streets, the Heath Bells, the success that they've had with the San Diego Padres. And he still dominates even those three guys. Matt Duffy, a single and a double tonight after going hitless the first two games. Three and one the count. And whether the writers, the voters would, would admit it or not, there's also, was he a good guy? Was he good for the game? Did he honor the game, the way he played the game? And that factors in too. Yep. It's not just the numbers that you had. Up. Did he have enough saves? And you know, nobody handled the press better than Trevor. No. He nobody. can blow a save. Guess who's the first one at his locker to answer the question? Exactly. Questions? That has a lot of weight as well. Well, I think a lot of people, especially these days, and the sabermetricians say that the closer position isn't important. Well, I think Trevor Hoffman changed my mind in that situation because of what he did. The things that you're talking about, Dick, everything that Trevor Hoffman encompassed about the game itself, doing his job, and also being a teammate, but being credible in that locker room, the importance okay. of having him was, was so paramount for a team success and I know the New York Yankees are probably saying the same thing about Mariano Rivera mm -hmm. now he's got three more years before he's mm -hmm. be eligible so maybe that's enough time to you know, discredit your theory right. yeah, I know you do that out of I hope that doesn't happen yeah I'm just trying to look at it from yeah. every angle because you don't know what writers are thinking and you don't know what you know the, the East Coast bias is thinking and that is a factor third base Banchenberg holds a runner at second and throws out Duffy. One away. Brings up Buster Posey. Well, if you look at the signature pitch of Trevor Hoffman, it, it's the changeup. You see the delivery, the arm speed, and floating in and embarrassing a lot of hitters, both left handed and right handed. Did not matter. And for the 1998 season, I saw one pitch. It was Moises Alou who hit the home run that tied the game. And that really was the only thing that Trevor Hoffman did wrong all the way until the World Series. Posey has grounded out and struck out. Tying run out there at second, carried by Diazza. I remember that pitch. First pitch fastball. Yep. Bang. And it was shocking to all of us yeah. because of how dominant Trevor was throughout the whole year. He had a safe streak working also and it busted the streak up. A vote I believe will be conducted in November so we're going to know about them. Maybe it's a little later. Ken Griffey Jr. is a automatic he'll go in on the first ballot as well he should absolutely. He was the best that I saw play in my day. Being a teammate of his. Sharply hit the short. Oh, the runner going to third takes a chance, but Varmus will throw out Posey. Gets the sure out. Didn't want to go over to third. So two away with Diazza at third. Yeah, really not a, a smart play by Diazza. You can see when the ball's hit to your right as a runner, that exposes you. But I think it had a lot to do with Corey Spangenberg in the placement that he is playing a little bit deeper. 
and the knowledge of Clint Barmas taking it out at first base. Yeah, he, he knew it would take a throw with uh, Spangenberg moving to the bag. It makes it a tough play. And you know, Corey Spangenberg usually at second base, playing third base tonight because of Salarte. All of those things factor in, and Clint Barmas made a nice play. Crawford got the Giants on the board in the second with a leadoff home run over the center field wall, his 20th. Check swing. And no, says third base umpire Shearwater. Tough with runners in scoring position all season long. Knocking in 29 runs. Swing and a miss. Remember the home run, first pitch fastball. First two pitches here, change ups. Out of the hand of Ian Kennedy. He seems to be a guest hitter, Crawford. Yeah, and he, you know what? He's guessed a lot Very, right this year, and he's taking more chances because of the comfort level as we look in. Looks like a changeup again. Outside. But for Brandon Crawford, it, a lot of factors come into it. He's taking those opportunities. He's a guest hitter, but he's also improved mechanically. With his swing, so he can take those opportunities. Hitting only 257, but the home runs and driving big runs in for the Giants this year. Shook off a changeup going fastball away. Three and one. Here's his home run, first time up. It was a fastball, first pitch. Ian trying to get ahead. And Crawford got extended. It really has been a quantum leap forward in the power department for Crawford. Two years ago, he had nine homers, and last year, 10. 20 this season. And first base open, and he will fill that void. Second walk from Kennedy. First and third, two outs to Marlon Bird, who has singled and grounded into a double play. Such a good hitter, Bird, and he still can play a decent outfield. When you think ahead to his future and the American League and that DH role mm -hmm. is beckoning. Two outs in the fifth, runners at the corners. Padres protecting a 3 2 lead. Not anymore. Base hit the left. He can hit. Game tied as Bird delivers again. That gets Diaz a home. It's a 3 3 tie. Well, Dick, at times, veteran hitters will sit on certain pitches, and I think Marlon Bird did exactly that. Looks like a breaking ball out of the hands of Ian Kennedy, and it's elevated. Sits on that pitch, and you can see him just waiting back just a little bit, but recognizing that out of Ian Kennedy's hands for the RBI single. Giants with two hits in the first, three in the second, three hits in the third, a hit in the fourth, now two more in the fifth, 11. Base hits and only a couple of double plays saving Kennedy from being well in the minus pool. But well, you think tied at three. Think about Ian Kennedy and what he has done really well tonight is pitching out of the stretch and pitching out of situations. Very important to that. If you're going to give up those hits, you really have to execute those pitches in tough situations. Here's the rookie Tomlinson, two for two, a couple of singles. Giants, remember, are the National League's best hitting team. Hitting 267 as a club. That's the best batting average of any National League outfit. Show, oh, it's all the way to the screen, and that'll move both runners into scoring position on the wild pitch. Crawford to third, and Bird to second. And a look now at our game box score brought to you by UPS. Already one two three five Giants with more than one hit. And when you have that many hits and you've got a close game tied up at three you try to avoid the extra base hit. There's been some doubles and of course the home run and of course the double play has helped in that category as well. Well you look what he's done to Buster Posey in, in the middle of the order 0 for three. That's really important. Because that's the that's the area where you can change games the middle of the order those pressure situations and he's done a nice job against Buster tonight. 
He got Buster Posey out with a runner at second base in the first. He struck him out with multiple runners on the third. And that was second and third, yeah. no one out. Yeah. yeah. Got him to ground out the third time with a man at third. So second and third for Tomlinson. 2 0 the count, first base open. Kevin Franson on deck. He and Posey, Franson are the only position players without a hit. 2 and 1. And you wonder with Kevin Franzen not having many at bats of late and just being activated today, if you'll take your chances if you get into that hitter's count, possibly taking your chances with Kevin Franzen rather than Tomlinson. Three and one now. It's a strike. 93 on the fastball. Free and easy getting out of that outside corner. That's a good sign. On Garner back even after giving up the three run homer to Derek Norris and a 3 1 Padre lead. Teammates rallying and nodding it up at 3 3, two on, two out. And no, a no, no. Oh my. Did he step off with his he stepped out with his right foot? Crawford bluffing down the line and Kennedy saw the movement out of the corner of his eye. Maybe he twitched a little bit. And Murphy's going to say no he did not balk. We'll take another look at it. Second base umpire DJ Rayburn made the call. Not played umpire West. Here it is. Yeah he balked. He started with his left foot indicating that starts his delivery. In fact if we start it again. He did start with his delivery foot, his left foot going back. That starts his delivery. The first movement, watch, watch his foot right here. He'll start that foot. That there starts your delivery. Then he starts off with his right foot. That is, in fact, a ball. Now things have been tough enough for Kennedy, giving up 11 hits and three runs. Joe West laughing it off. You gotta, you gotta give Crawford credit there at third base. Yeah. See, he bluffs and Kennedy see. Oh, is he really serious? Yeah, and he waits for the perfect time. If a, as a base runner, you're waiting for that movement, especially from the windup. And strike three call. He strikes out Tomlinson. One pitch too late. The Giants get two more in the fifth inning and break the tie on a balk. They lead for the first time.
Brooks, Madison Bumgarner back up in the Bay Area. He threw the one-hitter. Why was he so good that night? Well, we talk about the location of the fastball. Buster pulls his glove down and away. He threads it like a needle. He'll bust it inside sometimes with the breaking ball, but as Mark Sweeney was talking earlier, he goes in, 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 and then locates down and away. That time down and in. He keeps you guessing. He hits his spots, and that's why he tips his cap so many times to the crowd. Well, a tremendous night in the big leagues. We saw it last postseason. And he has the stuff, and now he has the confidence and the belief he can do it every time out. Look at that. One for 28. The pinch single by Upton. No runs, no walks, nine strikeouts. Almost a perfect game. Barmas leads it off here in the bottom of the fifth. Padres now trail by one, four to three. Barmas, then Kennedy and Myers. And Brett Wallace is in the on deck circle, so it appears uh, Kennedy's night is over after five. Rough innings, nothing easy about his effort tonight. Giving up four runs and 11 hits. Two walks and a balk. Barmas struck out his first time. Bumgarner has six punch outs. Fly ball behind second. Tomlinson out. Bird in. It's Tomlinson. Time now to check on our Cholula flamethrower. 93. You know, Bumgarner, he's not overpowering, but Mark Sweeney, 93 with location. It's a visiting player. It's hot sauce. <laughs> I, I like it. I don't even want to fish taco. I right know. I, I don't blame you. Dick doesn't know where they are anyway. Yeah. I, I can't afford them. <laughs> I wait for Taco Tuesday. <laughs> you like the hot sauce though, don't you? Oh, and on everything. Vanilla ice cream. <laughs> Brett Wallace pinch hitting for Kennedy. Oh, it's going to be Cody Decker. Cody gets a chance to swing the bat. The rookie finally getting a chance in the big leagues. Built a little bit like uh, Wallace, a little shorter, but stocky, broad shoulder. A one and one. You know what's great about the game of baseball, guys? What is it? If you cross all this out right here and you look at this, is that what's great about this game of baseball? 11 hits to three, but yet, you know what? Potteries are still in this one, only trailing by one. Well, that's why you got to commend great Ian game Kennedy. Of baseball. Obviously, Ian Kennedy didn't have his stuff tonight. Yep. You know, we say it all the time, and, and people think we're crazy, but giving your team an opportunity to win you're crazy. is really your job. Exactly. And you're crazy. But I love you anyway. Mean it. Mean it. I like to see Cody yeah, get, get into one. one. He has been the minor league home run star for the Padres system for a long time, but Norris appears to be the replacement for Kennedy in the top of the sixth inning. Go in the clubhouse and you go by Cody's locker. He's smiling ear to ear. Full count. Looking for his first major league knock. And down he goes swinging. Pretty tough to get that base hit against the quality man on the mound. Seven strikeouts. Two away to Will Myers, the leadoff man. And let's check on the American League Cy Young race. Mark, I think it's between those two. You I'll know, start with you. What do you think? You know what? I I know the numbers are very, very similar, but I, mine leans towards David Price. Yeah, I agree with you too. You think of Dallas Keuchel and what a tremendous year the Houston Astros have had, and it's because of the ace. See the record, see the RA. He had a blow up start recently. And their whip is pretty much the same too, Mark. You look at David Price and what he's done for Toronto after the trade. Yeah. He just keeps on getting better and better. He continues to beat the New York Yankees. I think you have to go with Price on that one. Price is right. Myers has grounded out and popped up. Ball and a strike to the Padre first baseman. 
Two outs here in the fifth. Base is empty, and Bumgarner working with the lead, four to three. Kennedy leaves the game with 90 pitches, five innings, four runs, 11 hits, two walks, five strikeouts, and a balk. Thinking back through the past 10 years or so, yeah, Bumgarner's pitching technique is so unique, isn't it? They're not a. I'm trying to think of another left-hander that kind of. Served it up there the way he does. Well, he hides the baseball so well. Obviously, he has that lower half that really supports his arm. But it's the pinpoint control. It's not necessarily velocity, but it's movement. And you can see the delivery here. Just riding those legs. He slings the ball. And you want to be in the batter's box? What are you looking for? Yeah, I'm looking out over the plate and it. Runs in on your hands and you know what he shows you that name and number on the back But before he starts to commit to the plate he gets that body centered over the rubber and then he starts to go forward See the balance and then go Inside and a full count to Myers and let's just face it the guy is so strong. I mean the, the kids an ox mm -hmm. Put a plow on him and he can just <laughs> plow a field for you right and be happy. Yeah, I love life The oxen. How about that for a nickname? That'd be a great like a photo shoot. You, you, you know, you get the bridle on, and you got a guy behind with you know, like the old days, how they used to till the field. You got Madison Bumgarner taking a big step. Yeah, but he's the uphill climb. He can't really dig that plow in the way some of the other boys can. But how about a base runner here and an extra base hit to how tie about, it up? How about a swing and a fly ball into the bleachers? How about a fresco? Myers with two ends. Base is empty. And spoils another. Look at all those pitches in. The breaking ball in. Tough to keep that fair, isn't it, Mark? It Stanley? is. And you, and you want to keep it, keep your hands inside the baseball. Very difficult to do with that cutting action. And it's a natural cut to his ball. Spansion Bird on deck. And ball four. Yeah, well, that's headline news. He walked a man. Well, that's a nice at bat by Will Myers. Staying in the strike zone, battling those pitches inside and fouling them off. Bruce Bochy, Dave Rigetti, the pitching coach. It runs the pitching count up to 83. And Spantenberg, a rare left hander against Baumgartner, and it's shown he struck out swinging both times. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to take it with him here and left on left and possibly trying to expose Kevin Franzen at first base. Runner goes, taken all the way, and wow. that's a steal for Myers. He stole that one on Bumgarner. He's halfway to second before Bumgarner delivered the ball. That's one of those where you take a chance. I mean, that's do or die. You just take off. Pays off for San Diego. Fifth stolen base of the year. You cannot wait, especially with the left hand out there, until he's going to the plate because it's that's too long. Well, Spangenberg can tie it up here with two outs in the fifth. I could picture Corey Spangenberg spanking something down that left field line like he's done a few times this year. Did a good job of taking the strike to give Myers a chance to steal. Sliced into the left field corner, Diazza into foul territory to make the catch. And the Padres leave another man in scoring position after five at Petco. 4 3 Giants.
starting on Fox with the battle for control of the NL wild card between the Pirates and the Cubs. When the Brewers take on the NL Central leading Cardinals in a game you can only see on FS1. Coverage starts Saturday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific on Fox and continues at 3.30 p.m. on Pacific. That's on Fox Sports 1. A new pitcher for the Padres here in the sixth inning is Bud Norris. Our pitching change brought to you by El Cajon Ford. Well, Bud Norris now in with the one-run deficit. Very crucial time. We've talked about the sixth, seventh innings for the Padres lately. Need to bridge that gap, throw up a zero here for the Padres to get their uh, packs in in the bottom half of the sixth. And almost a full moon, guys. Almost. It's a yes. big piece of cheese. Yeah, Limburger. Little down on the left side. Kevin Franson, first man that Bud Norris faces, then the pitcher Bumgarner and leadoff man Pagan. Every leadoff hitter in the first five innings on for the Giants. Single, three doubles, and a homer. 94 in the fastball, 2 and 0. Branson has grounded into a double play and struck out against Kennedy. Sends this one to shallow right near the line. Kemp. One away. And here's Bumgarner. I think Madison Bumgarner wants to designate a hitter in all both leagues. <laughs> He just looks like he has fun when he gets in the batter's yeah. box. See him stare down. It's all a bonus, huh? The home plate umpire. We got called out. In second at bat. The leg kick. Buzzed him with a 95 mile an hour strike. Cardinals and one again tonight, hosting Milwaukee. They're just cruising along, aren't they? 97 wins now for the Birds. Well, Matt Carpenter had two home runs yesterday. They need his bat because he's gone through some spurts this year where he's that consistent guy that they need. But Matt Holiday's getting healthy. Matt Adams getting healthy. You know, it's going to be interesting with the Redbirds as far as their outfield situation come playoff time. Who they're going to have eligible? There's there's like five or six guys that they could could take. Yeah, I, I mean it's very talented roster, but yeah. when ripped for a base hit, Baumgartner lashes one to left, a one out single. We talked about his legs on the mound, but you see that leg kick and using his lower half. It's a really nice stroke. Sounded like he broke his bat a little bit, but the swing and the intent from Madison Baumgartner, very impressive. So with one out, here's Pagan, a pair of doubles to left field, and a ground out to first. You know, uh, as you look at the standings, the don't look now department. How good are the Cardinals? They've won 97 games. Mm -hmm. Only the Pittsburgh Pirates have won more than 90 in all of baseball. Mm -hmm. the Pirates have won 93. All the rest are in the 80s. The leaders to boot. 97 for St. Louis. Yeah, a lot of parity in baseball, which is a good thing. But you always have that that team, and they've dealt with a lot of adversity this year. We talked about the offensive side already, but Adam Wainwright. You see where he might come back for yes. the playoffs. Yeah. And the and the, benef the benefit for them is he's already been a closer before. So it's not one of those things that you're going to have to change the mentality of any innings they can get out of Adam Wainwright is to their benefit. How about the Cardinals offensively? Eighth in average, 11th in home runs, 11th in slugging How percentage. How about pitching? Yeah, that's that's the point. Yeah. You're absolutely right. What are they? First? They are first. 2.89 ERA for the mm. Redbirds. Yeah, when we saw them last, they had their five starters all under three. Now let's take a peek at the uh, National League as we head toward the playoffs. Just a 
week and a half left. The Mets are going to win the East. The Cardinals. That's a, by far the most contentious of all the baseball divisions. The Central. All three of those teams look as if they're going to be in the playoffs. Yep. St. Louis, Pittsburgh, and the Cubs. And Dick, you look at the Central. Obviously, that's the story. Uh oh, but Norris says called for the trainer here. Paul Navarro, assistant trainer, out to see what the problem might be. He's handing the ball away. Oh, He's wow. coming out. He tweaked something uh, on that last pitch. So with an injury, a man on, one out, we'll have a delay now as a new pitcher will be allowed to warm up. Clubhouse. It's time now for our fans of the game. Brought to you by your fan Diego. College night. No exams tomorrow, I trust. You get an A anyway, just on looks alone. Hubba hubba. <laughs> well, Nick Vincent out of the bullpen it shouldn't take that long to get hot being a reliever. Take a look at the numbers for Nick in this season, his 23rd game. Well, that uh, fans of the game reminded me of my teaching days. You know, oh, yeah. I'd walk into the classroom. That's just how the kids would act, just like that. You know, when they walk in, they'd greet me that yeah, way. Yeah, why wouldn't they? Well, I just, oh, man. We just love Professor Edberg. <laughs> <laughs> Until the grades came out. <laughs> He's a righteous dude. Go back to Bud Norris and what might have happened on that last delivery. Well, what I look at is what a pitcher does after the pitch, and it kind of, I don't know, kind of near the groin area. Right there. Yeah, maybe it's so. That's at least where he reaches. So Nick Benson, who pitched an inning last night, struck out a couple of batters, comes in. A 4-3 game. The Giants lead with a man on first and one out. Madison Bumgarner, the base hit at first. Began a couple of doubles. Two for three tonight. Four runs, 12 hits for the Giants. Three runs, three hits for the Padres. The Giants have not had much success here down the stretch on the road. In the last 23 games, including last night, they're 6-17. And they've lost five series and split one other. They haven't won a series in the last six. Now this is the rubber game of this series. Didn't take Vincent long to get ready and a foul back.
You know, a tougher situation for Angel Bragan. You 2 2 count, and you're coming in, and you're seeing another reliever. Yeah. Even though it's right on, you know, two right handers, but two different styles. at two and two. Well, the Padres will send the Giants off tonight. They'll go up to Oakland for three and San Diego will welcome the Arizona Diamondbacks over the weekend. Tomorrow night 630 our broadcast time it'll be Casey Kelly back from a couple of years on the shelf with that Tommy John against a tough right hander Ruby De La Rosa. He's 13 and eight. Ground ball sharply to short. Barmas to Jerko. Jerko to first. It, no, not in time. That's tough to double up. The speedy Pagan, especially from that left side. He just does beat the relay. Pretty clean on everything. Maybe a little bit of humpy hump there on the feet from Clint Barmas, but still Pagan getting down the line quite nicely and just beats the throw. Yep, he was well safe. Yep. Bears watching. He has 10 stolen bases. Diazza, after striking out the first time, lined an RBI singled in the third and doubled and scored in the fifth. Watch Jet Jerko and the footwork around the bag. It looks like he slips just a little bit and wonder if it's all arm and didn't get enough on that throw. Yeah, that might have made the difference between out and safe. The top parts of those bags can be slick at times, especially if you get that heavy air that comes in. See the dirt on top of it. It gets wet on top and it can be very slick with your cleats going across. You can see him just going through it in his mind right there. But there's a lot of humidity in the air tonight. No question about it. That's a good point. The umpire at home plate, he cleans off that dish, but the other umpires, they don't, they're not very mindful of cleanliness out there. They don't tidy up things. <laughs> Swing in a mess. Two and one and two to Diaza. And now with two strikes, the danger of a possible bunt try away. Look how caked up those spikes yeah, are. That's a lot of muck. It must be a mutter. So Spanchenberg goes over to the right side of the infield. They give uh, Diaz a big shot there if he wants to try to poke it to left. You had your mutters, didn't you? When it was like, kind of like wet out, you'd have the spikes that you wear specifically when it was so you didn't mess up your good ones. I was the youngest of four boys. I didn't have anything. They just threw me out. Hand there. me downs. Hand me downs. They didn't even fit. We had hand me downs in our neighborhood. Well, if you played the University of Maine, which you, you snowshoes, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, we just <laughs> stayed in our dorms. <laughs> Lifted the left center, and Melvin Upton has an eye on it. That's it for the Giants in the six. The Padres need to run to tie.
Green, crisp, Coors Light, Madison Bumgarner striking out seven batters thus far with only one walk as he moves up the strikeout ladder in the National League. 85 pitches on the night, 56 for strikes. He's a strike thrower. You get a lot of foul balls. And very difficult because he works both sides of the plate. Matt Kemp, then Upton and Jerko for the Padres in the home half of the sixth. There's our cold hard fact. Kershaw leading the league, 281. Scherzer has 249 strikeouts, and Bumgarner third at 226. Ground ball to short. The shift was on, and it's right to Crawford. Oh, throws it away, but Kemp running uh, not at full speed. And those hips have to be bothering him. He's not getting down the line very fast these days. See if he works under it just a little bit. Now he's up on top, but the ball just kind of sails. And uh, you know, guys, a first baseman can only jump so high. Kevin Franzen just gets it in time to put the foot on the bag for the out. Upton has walked and scored and struck out. Showed you that cold hard fact about the strikeout pitchers, which we didn't show you, was uh, James Shields and Tyson Ross would be on that list had we gone to six, the top six strikeout pitchers. Left center field, did he get enough? No. Diazza loves it, two away. Chris Budden, you had anything on Bud Norris? Yeah, he's gone to the clubhouse with a right groin strain. That's what the trainers are calling it right now. We'll have more of an update for you tonight on Padres Live, the post game show. All right, thank you, Chris. Remember Mark Sweeney and uh, Mr. Enberg when uh, Norris threw this pitch, he kind of he walked around and right there. And that is uh, the injury Chris Budden was just talking about. Chet Jerko singled and scored and flied out. Bumgarner has given up just three hits, two of them back in the second. He had walked up then. Jerko singled and Norris homered to the opposite field for the Padres' three runs. The only other hit, a double by Norris in the fourth. Both to right field. Well, guys, you think about what's going on and, and the thought process of Darren Balsey, the pitching coach on the left, Pat Murphy. Just trying to construct who is going to get those innings, who's going to eat those innings, and Bud Norris thinking that you were going to extend him just a little bit. You got Casey Kelly starting the game tomorrow. So many thoughts go through your mind of how you're going to eat up those innings and the scenarios you go through. And that ever so important seventh inning. There was a couple of games, maybe three games, as Kevin Quackenbush talks to Willie Blair. He's getting hot. Hopefully for a clean seventh to keep it a one run deficit. Outside three and one. So it'll be an interesting weekend for the Padres because we'll get to see Casey Kelly tomorrow night and then Robbie Erlin will get the start on Saturday evening against Arizona. And then James Shields seeking his 14th win gets the go on Sunday. Three balls and a strike. And a walk. Yeah, Massa Bumgarner stared down home plate umpire Joe West. The previous pitch. And then loses Jet Jerko. Off comes the mass of Joe West. And they're not looking like they're too good of friends right now. Third walk given up by Matt Bum. Oh, we got a stare. We got a good old fashioned Western stare down. Out in front of the saloon. He blinked. That's that's in essence a nonverbal warning. Neither one of those two are backing down. Derek Norris, he's been the Padres hitting star tonight with a three run homer and a double. Two of the three hits of Bumgarner. Oh 
Joe West eyes were hurting so he backed out of there. <laughs> you can only stay here so long. <laughs> Bulb is starting to dry up yeah. a little bit. Jerko here in the bottom of the sixth inning with two outs representing the tying run. I bet Joe West would be a nice guy to you know saddle up and have a libation with him. I bet he can tell you some oh, stories yeah, now. He yeah. can hold some court now. And he'll sing to you as well. Yes, he will. He's the singing cowboy, isn't he? He'll let you know too. He can warble. Here's the pitch. Remember, Mark, you said it was before the, the pitch of the walk. That's the pitch there. It looked pretty good, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, Buster Posey wanted as well. And then the reaction and the body language. Joe West didn't care for that too much. He proceeded to walk Jed Jerko on the next pitch. Oh, and two. Well, with Derek Norris having that opposite field home run and the last at bat, he hit the double to right field. You see Massa Bumgarner trying to handle that and pitch him in. Now, if you're just joining us, Padres got a 3 1 lead off Bumgarner and the three run homer from Derek Norris in the second, but the Giants picked away and in the fifth inning tied it and Went ahead four to three on a balk by Stutter Ian Kennedy. Ninety eighth pitch of the night from Bumgarner. That was a good pitch to whack at. Just couldn't get the top hander out in front enough. Following it out of play. Six thirty tomorrow night. Game one of the three game series. Hope you'll come out. The Arizona Diamondbacks. It's a good hitting ball club. Diamondbacks started tonight two games in front of the Padres. They lost to the Dodgers earlier this afternoon. <laughs> Ready to rock and fight. Yeah, he was. A left hander as yeah, well. They got a left hander. Drop him down. Just wide of the bag. Mark Sweeney, you made a good point earlier about Bumgarner and Norris battling here, just dissecting both sides of the plate. Fastballs away, breaking ball down in. Derek. Falls the fastball off that way, out in front of the breaking ball down the left field line, and there you see Southland Technology Fox Tracks. A Bumgarner is going after Derek Norris. Well, the first two pitches inside, but then you have to expand the strike zone with two. And the 100th pitch of the night by Bumgarner, foul back. You now, to that point, Dick, you look at the Padres' approach to Massa Bumgarner tonight. It is not a fun night to battle the big left-hander, but they've done a nice job. Upping that pitch count as you see the pitch count by inning. And that's a win for a battle and you see sixth inning and you have 100 pitches. That's a pretty good sign for the Padres. Jerko the tying run carried there at first. It's Madison Bumgarner with the lead looking for his 19th win of the season. No ordinary number. And another foul just clipped that one back. Bumgarner won 18 last year, was 18 and 10. He's 18 and 8 this season. The last giant pitcher to win 18 games in back to back years. Gaylord Perry. Wow. We've got to go back to 69 and wow. 70. 26 establishing himself of Madison Bumgarner and Giants pitching lore. In the dirt. Finally a ball thrown by Bumgarner. And the last left handed pitcher in Giants history to win 18 games back to back and he did it six straight years. You got to go all the way back to King Carl. Oh, Hubble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hubble Hubble. And again to repeat Bumgarner's only 26 inside two and two. Hey this is a great battle here. Yeah.
Mixing in the breaking ball about every other pitch. And he finally wins the battle with the breaking ball, the ninth pitch of that at bat. And after six here at Petco, <laughs> Joe West still staring Bumgarner all the way to the dugout. It's the Giants four, the Padres three, strikeout number eight for Mad Bum. Ever home run to the opposite field. Norris with his three run shot tonight, his 14th of the season, but Marlon Bird tied it up off Ian Kennedy at three all in the fifth inning. And then Crawford bluffs and triggers a balk from Kennedy. And Crawford comes in to score what is now the lead run, four to three. That's back in the fifth inning. You can only argue, but can't always win. Joe West uh, not convinced by manager Murphy's complaint. But from uh, Mark Grant's view, his commentary indeed, uh, Norris, a couple of uh, movements with both feet, balked, and it's a 4 3 game. Kevin Quackenbush to face Duffy, Posey, and Crawford in the seventh. Dick, very important inning here in the seventh, and still only a one run deficit. So the bullpen has to throw up zeros. And now it's time for Kevin Quackenbush. Last time was against these Giants. A couple of days ago, two thirds of an inning, a walk, a strikeout, give up a couple of runs. Time to turn it around. Quackenbush giving up the home run to Pagan on Tuesday night. Duffy, a single, double, and a ground ball to third. Pretty good pitch. One and one. What is, is a huge inning. I get choked up just thinking about it. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, you know, three, four, five, two up for the Giants. Kevin Quackenbush is going to have to be on his game. Four runs and 12 hits for the visitors, three runs, three hits for the Padres. Nice. Two and two. Well, he missed with the curveball up prior to this pitch and makes an adjustment outside corner for a called strike. Thank you. You don't want to keep it up there, though. That's going to be a tough play. Charging is Spangenberg. Can't get it. Safe at first. Another leadoff man aboard for the Giants. Six out of seven innings tonight. Well, you know, you come to the ballpark, Mark Grant, you never know what you're going to see. Exactly. Well, how about what Chris Button? Was up to tonight. Well, wasn't me that was up. To <laughs> no, no, it, not it was you. Somebody else. Yeah, you know, you stole the line right out. So there was a first in Petco Park history tonight. 
a baby boy was born Come on. at Petco Park. Come on. I promise, mom went into labor watching a ball game. <laughs> Guess uh, the little baby boy didn't want to wait. So, yeah, here wow. at Petco Park. It wasn't me. It was somebody else. <laughs> now we got to find out what they're going to name that yeah. child. How about Petco? You know? <laughs> well, it depends, too. Obviously, she's a real fan to stay right through yeah. labor. I wonder if that... I wonder if that woman who had the baby requested Buster Posey to catch it. Oh, because of that commercial. That commercial, yeah. yeah. Thanks for that report, Chris. Wow. So we trust that that mom and baby are in good health and have been transported to some hospital care. That's a, Todd Hutchison does almost everything in the trainer's room, and we've got doctors. There are doctors, by the way, and it's on a very serious side, of course, that are yeah. here at Petco. Sure. Uh, so from with, some of our best hospitals, they're, they're well manned with physicians here during games. So with the Giants in town, it's only appropriate. Hum baby and bye-bye baby. Hum baby, right. And rock a -bye. There you go. They were trying to decide the baby... The name between Pomerantz and Levi, so they picked Levi. <laughs> so Levi, Levi is the name, and Levi landing. Levi oh, has landed. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh, congratulations! Hope everything's going well. Yeah, that's that is. You, you, you one up this Chris, but <laughs> yep, you come to the ballpark, you never know what to expect. But that's a new one. Infield single for Duffy, the 13th giant hit. And Posey's and uh, Kevin Franson, the only Giants without a base hit tonight. There you see the totals. Duffy leading the way with three. Magan, Diaz, Bird, Tomlinson all with two. Bumgarner with a hit. Three and zero. Oh. The attendance tonight, a terrific house on this Thursday. 31,137 college night, and they're having a good time. Yeah, they are. Great to have them here. I wonder, do they count? You know, uh, the baby doesn't count, didn't pay. No, nope. <laughs> she didn't pay <laughs> a, a ticket <laughs> for the kid. <laughs> High pop up, shallow and center. And Upton takes care of. Posey's fly ball, one to win. Well, we made your promise earlier, and we're going to make that promise come true here. Tonight's T-Mobile strongest fan. You're going to show the baby? Uh, they, they, that'd be great if they could. Use Let's the see. hashtag SD Data Strong Fan. Uh, no baby there. Brought to you by T-Mobile. Thank oh, you, Paul. The prime balls, huh? Good looking Padre fans there with their appropriate ball caps. Murphy to the mound. And uh, with the left-handed hitting Crawford do, he's got a home run and a couple of walks and scored a couple. They'll go to Mark Zepchinski. Pitching change at Petco.
one out here in the seventh inning. Zepchinski from Cleveland with Abraham Almonte going to the Indians and has done a good job for Cleveland. 21st, fourth appearance for the lefty. ERA a little too high. And trouble with right handed batters. And of course, with the Here. September call ups, there's plenty of help out there in the pen. Oh, yeah, get them up, get them ready. And that's a small list. The Giants is about twice that long. Mm -hmm. Last night, Bruce Bochy used 10 pitchers in nine innings. He even used one pitcher to come in to walk a batter intentionally. So, left hander against left hander. Crawford a home run over the center field fence and two walks and two runs scored. All right, it's time for Mark Zepchinski to get nasty and make a pitch. How sweet would it be to come into a game, you make one pitch, you get a double play, get out of it. Get two runs scored for you in the bottom half, That's and then right. one pitch could get you a win. It's called the vulture. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Phil Regan made a nice living doing yeah. that. That's a strike. Runner goes, throw by Norris, not in time. He stole that on Zepchinski. Yeah. Duffy. Yeah, once again, when that front foot moves from the left there, it's a do or die situation. The leg is up, the runner is off, and now Derek Norris has got to make it up. A couple of steals for Duffy tonight, 11 on the season. So he becomes the third Giants rookie, third Giants rookie. To steal at least 10 bases, score 70 runs, and knock in 70. Orlando Cepeda and Chili Davis, the other two. Oh, nice. Nice company. Yeah. Two balls and a strike to Crawford. And the Giants have been a running team here late in the season. With two tonight, they've scored, or they've stolen 50 since the All Star break. Yeah, we see Bruce Bochy put runners in motion this series. That's the most of any National League team. Ground ball sharply at first. Myers hangs with it. Two away with Duffy moving to third. Well, as a left hander in this game of baseball, you come to the ball yard with thinking, you know what, I might only have to face one hitter. First pitch strike, very crucial for any. Left hander on lefty. So you try to expand the zone. Falling behind now 2 1. And, you know, that was a middle in. He kind of tied it up a little bit. And what do you know? Pat Murphy out to the mound again. So another pitcher, the Padres' sixth, beckoned from the bullpen. 4 3 Giants.
Padre pitcher of the inning. Quackenbush, Zepchinski, and now right hander John Edwards. You know, the, the times that John Edwards has gone on the mound, and then I get a chance to talk to the other announcers and some of the other people that the Padres have played against this is call up. You know, John Edwards acquired in the uh, Will Venable trade from Texas. I'll tell you what, these, these people, they say, boy, that Edwards kid, he's got some good stuff, and that's a good sign. So, seventh game for John. You know, a little high on the walks, you know, but still. Look at the splits, Dick. 231 lefties, 143 for the righties. Tough hitter, Marlon Bird. A couple of singles and a double play tonight. Delphi at third. Two outs. Ninety five on a sailing fastball. Bird with an RBI his last at bat. Sixty eight runs batted in this year. Shift on. Oof. That's a tight slider right there. Student body left for the Padres defensively. A ball, a strike to Bird. Duffy down the line at third. Fly ball to right. Pretty deep, but Kemp in front of the morning path. And Edwards gets the final out. It's the stretch half of the seventh at Petco Park. The Padres trailing the Giants four to three. Sturm recaps the most memorable highlights by the Padres this season. Plus, the best of Padres POV continues the countdown to number one and learn the real story behind the story of Pick the Stick and the Secrets of the Game. Ooh. Tomorrow after Padres That's Live right fun. here on Fox Sports San Diego. Yeah, it's got Emmy written all over oh, it. Oh, I smell an Emmy. Yeah, baby, who wouldn't want to know oh. behind the scenes of Pick the Stick? I mean... <laughs> It's top secret stuff, and you're going to hear it firsthand right here. It's like a key to Fort Knox. Melvin Upton Jr., then Clint Barmas in the pitcher spot for the Padres. John Edwards in that slot. Upton has grounded out twice. Bumgarner with his 107th pitch of the night. One and two the count. And you saw the line score, the big three. Back in the second inning for the Padres, all on one swing. Derek Norris's 14th home run of the year. He's also got a double. And Gurko with a single, the only other hit off Bumgarner. Watch out.
I heard rumors, you know, in that piece they're doing about the background story, the inside story, right. to pick the stick. I'll back that uh, some of my colleagues, my esteemed colleagues, were very critical of me being competitive. No. Yeah, we, they said. We would never say well, that. I was more competitive than some of the other guys. What do you think about that? <laughs> was it you? Did you I say I don't think that? it was me. Okay, you wouldn't. I bet it was Button. <laughs> Foul back. We had a lot of fun doing that. I, I, it's all tongue in cheek. Sure. But the key is, as a viewer, which cheek? Mm. Yeah. So stay tuned. Dot, dot, dot. Ground ball sharply at Duffy. He cradles it. And the throw across in time. Hey, remember the movie Clint Eastwood, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly? Remember that last scene where they're all staring each other down? Bumgarner doesn't like that call. So there's the walk. Now the stare. And Bumgarner yells. And then all of a sudden the stare down can start up. Here we go. Bumgarner West. Bumgarner West. And then after the inning, off with the mask. And look at Joe West and Bumgarner. <laughs> uh, nothing like a good old-fashioned Western stare down. That's Drama right there. <laughs> Barmas struck out and popped up tonight. Tom Garner showing his stuff. He's made one mistake. It cost him a three run shot off the bat of Derek Norris for a Padre lead. But since then, only a double by Norris in the fourth. Nothing else except a couple of walks. Look who's on deck. Jan Salarte, bad hamstring and all. Get your spot due next. A couple of doubles last night for Solarte. Knocked in two. And Barmas goes down swinging for the second time. Nine strikeouts for Bumgarner. Let's take a look at the first clinching of a division title, the Kansas City Royals, with a win tonight in Seattle, 10 to 4. They have clinched the Central. It's their first title since 1985, yep. the days of George Brett. But now it's time for Ned Yost, the manager of the Royals, to start setting things up as far as rotation and giving some guys some rest, but yet still maintain that intensity done the last couple of weeks before they enter the playoffs. And congratulations to the Royals. We see them every yep. spring training, yep. and they got a good club. We've watched them grow. You know, all those top draft picks are finally yep. maturing, and yep. that's a tough lineup. Yeah, I love that Lorenzo Cain. Man, oh. what a player! Salvador Perez. I'm a big fan of that yeah, kid. One of the best catchers and the young guys too. Alex Gordon, one of the best left fielders in all of baseball defensively. The, the Moose. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Moustakis. The Royals will have a chance to take some deep breaths before the playoffs. It'll be interesting because Derek Holland is out for the year. Elbow problems. Wade Davis now uh, the closer. Spangenberg and Jerko waiting for their turn up ahead. Bases clean. 117 pitches for Bumgarner. 3 and 0. Oh. And in there. Joaquin Benoit and Marcus Mateo heating up for the Padres. Center field, but not deep enough. Got under it, and Diazza takes care of the final out in the seventh. We're guessing that'll be all for Bumgarner. Only three hits through seven.
The Padres top of the eighth. Mark and I are working on Padres Live, the post-game show, which will be brought to you tonight, as it always is, by Cox Communications. How about a game break, though, as we get things moving? Because the Giants are playing for their lives, and the Dodgers pulled off another win tonight. Mike, Chris Heisey left the Dodgers, went to Toronto, came back to the Dodgers. The bench players have been tremendous for the Los Angeles Dodgers this year. If you look at it, those are the ones that have really done the damage all throughout the year. And today they back Clayton Kershaw as the Dodgers beat the Arizona Diamondbacks. What we see on a postgame show, we're also going to have Fox Sports San Diego MLB insider Scott Miller along with us. We're going to break down the American League East race, the West race. He's got some interesting stories to tell you about the Cubs manager, Joe Madden, and he's got a report on whether or not baseball is getting a little too crazy with pitch counts and protecting young arms. We'll have all that for you and more coming up after the final out. Take a mark. Oh, yeah, that's uh, something to chew on yeah. tonight. That'll be Good TV watching for you baseball fans right after the final on Marcus Mateo comes in trying to hold the Giants in check hope the Padres their final two at bats can rally as they did last night winning five to four they trail four three tonight Mateo will face the bottom three Tomlinson Franson and Bumgarner I say Bumgarner even though he probably has finished his work on the mound but such a good hitter they probably didn't hit huh. Has a single in three trips tonight and a hard ground ball out. You never know. Tom looks in two singles and a strikeout. All quiet in the giant bullpen. There are a couple guys getting up, kind of getting loose a little bit as Bruce Bochy watches Tomlinson. Big inning for Marcos Mateo. Still only one run deficit. Try to keep that leadoff man off base. Six of the seven innings, the Giants leadoff hitter reaching safely. There's some handshaking going on between innings and the third yeah. base dugout, so apparently Bumgarner has completed his night's work. Well, you talk about a top of the rotation. Pitcher, Madison Bumgarner. Swing and a miss. Tomlinson is gone. First strikeout, Mateo. Well, we're going to have that pick the stick special tomorrow. And at the start of the series, Mark Grant had a 21 point lead over Chris Button. And look uh -oh. what Button is doing. Nine points tonight. 320 her points. She's within two. Of well, Grant. well, well. Hey, and you know what? Don't count Pomerantz out at 306 now. Chris yeah, Button, yeah, how do you do it? Pomerantz is no Bobby Thompson, but Chris Button might be. <laughs> Fly ball Franzen to right center where Upton Melvin wants it. Two away. And let's see if Bumgarner hits or not. Now they're going to let Jared Parker, who homered off the bench last night, come up. <laughs> Well, you know what? As you look ahead, you know, we all have Scott on reports you can look ahead. Well, Chris Budden's going to be on assignment uh, for college yeah, every football. Every time she leaves, everyone just takes well, points away from her. Allie right? Sturm's filling in for her, and that's how I got my big lead. Are you saying Allie Sturm? Right. Are you saying she's bad at this game? Yeah, I just call him as I see him, Chris. <laughs> Wait, aren't you leaving too? Yeah, he's going to be gone this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Who's yeah picking for you. I mean, I really like Clay Hensley as a person, but um, at Pick the Stick, he's. he's um, Go ahead. A little below par as well. Oh, he's bogey, huh? Me and Allie are going to discuss. We're going to. It's been a collaborative team effort, and it will continue that way. This is Nick Noonan, a local lad from Francis Parker High. Pinch hit the other night and struck out. Well, all I have to say is, uh, may the best pick the stick player win. You write that down. <laughs> I think that's Grantland Rice. Was he the first? <laughs> no. I mean, that's actually it. Really is exciting. Remember isn't it? last year it came down to Sweeney and I. Yeah. Last at bat. Off the fist popped up. Here comes Myers down from first in foul territory. And Mateo retires the side in order in the top of the eighth. Here come the Padres. It'll be Myers leading it off.
Jack in the Box. Taste that new spicy nacho chicken sandwich munchy meal tonight. <laughs> and by Petco. What we feed them, not a munchy meal, but it matters. <laughs> Ed Pomerantz is all over that munchy meal, isn't he? Oh, he's the crush. Ah! All right, here we go. Hunter Strickland on his birthday comes in to work the bottom of the eighth inning. Strickland, 27 years of age on this date. Makes another appearance, 53rd on the season. Well, a hard thrower. He's worked in all three games of the series and gave up a home run on Tuesday night. Well, look at the splits. Right, he's 191. Left, he's 197. Pretty much two-pitch pitcher, fastball slider, and he can get it up there. Upper 90s for Hunter Strickland. Now Brett Wallace turned around one of those fastballs and sent it over the right center field wall on Tuesday night. Myers hitless in the series. Ground out and popped up tonight. Did walk and steal a base. With Spanchenberg and Kemp to follow. So Bumgarner seven solid innings. Allowed the three runs earned. On three hits. Walked three and struck out nine. Ninety six on the fastball, a miss, two and oh. Spangenberg glad to see a right hander out there and not Bumgarner. One hundred twenty pitches for the all star left hander. Three time all star, last three years. Another miss, three and oh. Lead off walks can be a very good thing. Sergio Romo, Javier Lopez. That's a partnership that's served Bochi well through the years. And he walked him on four pitches. Well, the leadoff man on. Bochi doesn't like that. He, he knows the way to the mound. He left a lot of crumbs out there last <laughs> night. And with left hand expansion, Berg do, he's going to go to Javier Lopez. And we're going to go for these important words. have a moment the most popular way to follow the action of the Padres baseball is with the MLB.com at bat app the number one app for live baseball enjoy live look-ins highlights replay reviews scores stat cast live radio broadcasts and much much more get the MLB.com at bat app now you got to have it we want to welcome the fans that may be switching over from the NFL game tonight the Giants beat the Washington Redskins 32 21 Dick Enberg with Mark Grant, Chris Button, Mark Sweeney, Mike Pomeran standing by at the postgame show.
Javier Lopez in with the tying run at first for the Padres here in the eighth inning. Will Myers walked facing Hunter Strickland. Lopez called in lefty against lefty, and we'll see if Spangenberg is going to try to sacrifice. Yeah, I think that's in order as you see the third baseman Duffy there. So uh, down the first baseline. Padres got their three on one swing. Derek Norris, 14th home run of the season against starter Madison Bumgarner back in the second. The Giants chipped away and scored a couple in the sixth inning and the tie breaking run on a balk by starter Ian Kennedy. So 4 3, eighth inning. Myers the tying run at first, and there's the bunt, and it's a good no throw by Posey is in time. They get the force. Boy, he is quick out of the box. Posey pounces on that bunt a little short. A lot of catchers yep. wouldn't have tried that. Posey makes the play. Just not bunted hard enough. Off of the mask. And the force play, Brandon Crawford acting as a first baseman at second base. Works underneath it a little bit, but the tiptoe, the catch, the force, they get the lead runner. Good play at both ends. And here comes Bochi. Well, it's that time of the year with all the players available in the bullpen, managers having a field day. Pitcher after pitcher after pitcher after pitcher after pitcher. Night in relief. He uh, gave up that two run double by Travis Jankowski that gave the Padres a four to three lead. I was relinquished. The uh, Giants went ahead or tied it at four, and then the Padres won it on Jerko's hit. Now that is comforting, isn't it? He's used three relievers, and he's got that choice yeah. candy store bullpen here in September. Uh, it's going to be interesting when uh, you know the collective bargaining agreement comes up and they throw all the issues on the table. I'm sure that September call-ups will be an issue that yeah, they that talk could about. Expand to 50 players. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Kemp. So it's Manchenberg, a good base dealer, replaces Myers, failing on the sacrifice bunt. Kemp tonight is 0 for 3. A strikeout, a flyout, a ground out. Well, Romo does a pretty good job of keeping the ball in the ball yard. 53 innings, he's only given up three home runs, but you, know, you hang one of those sliders that he throws middle, middle end to Matt Kemp with one swing of the bat, the Padres could take the lead. Span Romo goes from the extreme first base side of that rubber, you can see right there, Dick. Spanchenberg with nine stolen bases. Kemp lines it. Will it stay fair? Yes, into the corner. Spanchenberg on the run around second. He's digging for third. He's going to try to score. He will score. Here comes Kemp. Pulls up the brakes at second. It's tied at four as Kemp comes through his 99th RBI of the year.
That was a hanging slider right down the middle, and Matt catches it out in front a little bit because Romo is not that overpowering. So out in front of it, just enough to keep it fair. And that's a no-doubter, as you mentioned, Dick, with Corey Spangenberg on first base. Tying it up. Kemp was flirting with going to third base there. He was halfway to third as uh, Diaz had trouble digging it out of the corner. So just as it was last night in the late innings, eighth inning, it's tied at four. Romo gave up the two-run double to Jankowski. He gives up the tying double to Kemp. And now Upton with a chance to get the Padres in front here in the eighth. He has walked and scored, struck out in flight out tonight. Kemp third in the league in RBIs with 99. Oh, and he got one to punish there. That ball was on a tee for Justin Upton. Just pulling off it a little bit and working underneath it. Well, the leadoff walk, although Myers was forced on the bunt try, becomes a run. And Upton with a chance along with Jerko to get the Padres the lead. Look at where that number two pitch was. Mm. So that takes a win away from Bumgarner as he seeks a 20 victory season. And gets Kennedy off the hook as well. And oh. now it's Upton that is uh, acting as those for that swing that he might have pulled something. Earlier in the game, Bud Norris out of the bullpen with a groin pull had to leave the game. See him kind of stretch right there and kind of bend over at the waist just before he enters the box. And then that's when he backed out again and Todd Hutchison came out. On Burrell Hutchison. And the way he was stretching there, it's, it's kind of in the morning when you, uh, you're back, you bend over and you hear that nice little pop, huh? <laughs> or is that just me? <laughs> that, that's, me that's me too, yeah. believe me. 4 4 tie. Oh. By the way, a little scorekeeping uh, tidbit. That run that scored goes on Hunter Strickland's card. Remember the walk to Will Myers? He walked right. in. Because of the force play at second base on the sacrifice, that runner's erased, but still, because Spangenberg's out, that is still Hunter Strickland's runner, even though it's a new pitcher. So that run is charged to Hunter Strickland. That's a good point. And if Upton can bring. Kemp home, then that runs, of course, on Romo. The ball two strikes. Slider after slider. Jet Jerko waits his turn. Game winning hit last night, four for five on his birthday. He's got a hit and a walk in uh, three at bats tonight as Craig Kimbrell, the Padre closer, hopes he gets a chance at his save. Padre leader. And down goes up and two away. And here's Jerko. Fastball away after the sliders, the heavy dose of sliders. 87 miles an hour, but outer half and elevated just a little bit. You know, it just goes to show you, folks, if, if you're a reliever, if you're a pitcher, and you throw majority breaking balls, you flip it up there, that 87 mile an hour fastball is going to get up on you rather quickly. So, Jerko, can they offer the winning base hit back to back? His walk-off single last night against Santiago Casilla, the closer for the Giants. He had a single against uh, Romo 
when they faced last evening. Line to left, Diazza toward the corner, and he makes the catch. But the Padres get even here in their home half of the eighth inning. The leadoff walk and the RBI double. Matt Kemp is 99 of the season. And the Padres and the Giants are all knotted at four. Counts as we go to the top of the ninth inning, and it'll be Craig Kimbrell. Even though it's not a safe situation, last night Kimbrell came in and was the winning pitcher in the Padres' ninth inning 5 4 victory. Oh, great splits. Lefty's 198, righty's 180. And we know about the, the, the strikeouts are just mind boggling. 82 strikeouts in 56 in a third innings pitch. That's that's just unbelievable. Time to throw up a zero and for the Padres to win it at the bottom half of the ninth. Kimbrell will face the top of the order. Pagan, Diazza, and Duffy for the Giants. Last night, he gave up a run, an unearned run in the ninth inning. Struck out a couple, but an error by Camp and Wright and a double by Crawford. And a wild pitch. Scored the fourth run to tie the game, and it was a legitimate yeah. wild pitch, a fastball all the way to the screen. With Crawford at third. The eighth pitcher of the night for the Padres. Fastball at 96. Now Kimbrel, when he's on his game, is very consistent. He tops out at 98. And Dick, remember last night, even though he gave up the run, but he had the curveball working last night. That was a nice, free and easy motion there to get ahead, strike one. Pagan, a couple of doubles, two for four. Scored a run. Weak wave at that one. There's that number two, Uncle Charlie. The snake. Let's take a look at Uncle Charlie. The hook. The yacker. Right back with a curveball, one and two. Now he's sitting on the fastball, isn't he? Yeah, you see, that's a good point. It was all like arms. He recognized curveball and uh, better get yeah. a piece of it to stay alive. That would have been a strike, it looks like. But he's looking for a fastball that can yeah. do some damage.
Pagan two hits. The man on deck, Deanza with two, and then Duffy with three. And fastball at 96, so he's a couple of miles an hour shy of his normal velocity. Whether that's a sign that he's not quite as strong after pitching last night, we will soon learn. And a full count. There's 97. I love that shot. It's a great shot, isn't it? Pitching on a small moon. And he walked him. Hmm. No lead off walk. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. So, uh, see uh, Dave Roberts, the bench coach, there with Pat Murphy, the manager, motioning for third baseman Spangenberg to shallow up. Diaz, a single, knocked in a run in the third, doubled and scored in the fifth. See how Bruce Bochy plays it. A good base runner in Pagan with 10 stolen bases. Yeah, he'll be bunting here. Some of the Padre fans in the 31,137 here tonight. We're rooting for Kimbrell to get out of early trouble. A couple of double plays at yeah. the start of the game got Kennedy off the hook. That's why that hit total is. So skewed 13 for the Giants and only four for the Padres but a couple of double plays in the second and third inning when the Giants had six hits in those two innings but scored only one run two run folks. That one. Alejandro Diaz. Swinging and takes a strike at ninety six. Oh, that's cheese, isn't it? Mm. Which he wipes off the sacrifice, lets him swing, but yeah. takes. You know, I was watching Roberto Kelly, the third base coach for the Giants, and he was giving a series of signs. Then he put po both fists together, like, you know, the, the hit mm -hmm. sign. And uh, you're right, Dick, he did not indicate bunt there. But he could turn it around here and yeah. still try. No, nope, swing it. And fouls it back. Nice compact swing, Diaz. He's up on the handle, so it looks as if he might be bunting. Just trying to punch the ball somewhere with it. Two strikes now. Spanchenberg can back off at third. You know, with the hard throwing Kimbrell, you're right, backing up at third base, you get that ball to the left side on a fastball away. Heads up. Swing and a miss. A curveball gets Diazza. One away. That'll bring up Matt Duffy. Watch him get on top of it. That ball splits the play. And look at how much he misses that on that swing. Mm. Oh, Uncle Charlie coming in saying hello and goodbye to Diazza. So here's Duffy. Single to center. Double to right. Grounded out and beat out an infield hit. Also stole a couple of bases tonight. He's had a solid rookie season, this young man. Cal State Long Beach. The 
A year ago, Joe Panic was a rookie star. Now Duffy. Panic, one of the many injured giants. There goes the runner. The throw by Norris is in time. Maybe challenged. Bochi takes a couple of steps out of the dugout. What a throw by Norris if he did get him. And that's a call. It's his 39th runner caught stealing. Challenge is the call. And Bochi almost reluctantly says, okay, let's challenge. Well, you can smell that one coming. And by Angel Pagan staying on second base after the call was made there. He wasn't going anywhere. He kind of motioned towards the dugout as on the bag and looks like he's safe. I think he's safe. That's going to be. Does he stay in the bag? He stays on the bag. Yes, he does. And um, as you mentioned, Dick, earmuffs. Bruce Bochy elects to challenge. Outside part of the bag, Pagan on the bag there. And he's safe. That shouldn't take long in New York, but uh, we've said that many times. Yeah. And those are the Giants fans behind the third base dugout that cheered at the replay up on the big scoreboard. So the umpire on the right, DJ Rayburn, the calling umpire, and crew chief Joe West, both on the headphones to New York on the left. And it, it should be quick, and it will be. It's going to be ruled safe. So the 11th stolen base of the season for Pagan. So a walk and a steal as good as a double, and he's got a couple of those. And in a 4 4 tie here in the ninth inning, that lead run in scoring position. The pitch was taken as a ball by Duffy. So 1 0. Oh. With Buster Posey. Surprisingly, one of the few Giants not in the 13 hit attack on deck. Fly ball to right center. Upton has to give ground. Tagging is Pagan. Two away, and Pagan strolls to third. And here comes Posey. He has struck out, grounded twice to short, and flied out. We're in the collar tonight. He was over four last night. Remember last night, Dick, you mentioned it, the wild pitch, the play at the plate. Safe. Derek Norris has got to be on his game of Locking that bouncing breaking ball or be aware of that fastball that gets away from the right hander. And Posey was on when Kemp dropped his fly ball to open the inning. Trying to get the third best hitter in the National League out. He goes after the breaking ball 0 and 1. Bottom of the ninth inning, looking ahead, the Padres have. Norris, Melvin Upton, and Clint Barma scheduled. Remember, it's been the breaking ball tonight that has been given Buster Posey fits. First pitch from Kimbrell, breaking ball. Swung on and missed. Look where Kemp is playing. That was tucked into the right field corner. Way over. One and one. And that's where you'd play for a left-handed dead pole hitter. Walk to steal a fly ball. Pagan at third. Two outs. Outside. Left handed hitting Brandon Crawford on deck. Home run tonight, his 20th. The action pitch, two and one. Hit to right center. Upton eyes it into his glove, and that's it for the Giants in the ninth. 
Couple deep flies to center, no damage done. The Padres come up, tied at four. Play of the game. We go back to the first inning. That's Duffy with a base hit. Pagan was at second. Take the big turn at third. The relay in, and they get him. As Will Myers with a cutoff behind the mound, a perfect throw to Norris, and Pagan denied. And that's a big play as he reflect back on a 4-4 tie because not only would he have just scored had he made the proper route as he took a big turn at third base, but the inning would have still been alive. For Posey and Crawford and others. And Crawford did indeed homer to lead off the second inning. So, bottom of the ninth, Padres on only four hits are tied at four. And Mike Broadway is the pitcher. The fifth used by Borgia. Two pitch pitcher, Michael Broadway, the fastball and the slider, and Derek Norris tonight has hit a home run the opposite way. Against Pittsburgh earlier in the year, a home run for the walk-off. That was the grandmaster, a slam. But just a solo would be quite well acceptable by the Padre dugout. A three-run homer tonight to right field, his uh, first ever home run. He's a pole hitter, and he got a piece of Bumgarner's uh, breaking ball and took it right where it was pitched over the right field wall. Number 14 on the season. Broadway, one of the call ups at September 1st for the Giants, pitched uh, last night, got one man out. I'll tell you what, Derek Norris's act this year is definitely Broadway material, but a home run off Broadway would be some kind of yeah. nice right here. A lot of good shows off Broadway. The ball in the strength. Josh Osich. Left hander getting ready. Was not in line at the moment for the Padres, but Brett Wallace is in the dugout. Inside, two and one. Alex Dickerson, another left handed bat, and Amarista, a lefty. Available for manager Murphy. Not only a home run to right, but a double to right for Norris this evening. Half of the Padre hit total. The only other hits, Kemp's two double to tie it. And a single by Jerker the Jerko that preceded Norris's home run. Line drive over the head of Duffy into the corner. 
Mr. Double. Derek Norris has another two base hit. His second tonight. What an evening for Derek Norris. The winning run on a leadoff double perched in second. Two doubles and a three run homer for Norris. Have a game. He battles each and every at bat. That's kind of a rolling up there slider out of the hand of Michael Broadway. And just like that, Mr. Doubles. 32nd and 33rd of the season. He's tied down with Jan Salarte for the club lead. Travis Jankowski hits running for Norris. Give that man a double double. It's on me. But that two doubles and a three run homer. Yeah. Melvin Epton is grounded out all three times. Infield, of course, looking for the sacrifice. Will the Padres try to get Jankowski over to third? Try to win the game on and out. Yeah. And it's a beauty. Nice, Melvin. Throw to first in time. That's getting the job done. Perfect sacrifice for Melvin Upton. And the winning runs at third with one out. Nicely done. That's a good feeling right there. You get that runner over. It's the winning run. You get high fives from your teammates. Perfectly executed. And here comes Brett Wallace to pinch hit for Barmas. Wallace has been absolutely superb as a pinch hitter this season. Forty one. Pinch hit at bats with 15 hits. That's his overall batting uh, numbers 333 but for those five home runs on pinch hit appearances and all he needs now is a deep fly ball or a ground ball through the infield they're not going to let him do it they're going to they may even walk the Wallace and the next batter and load him up to get a force at every base and it's Alexi Amarista who's on deck right now I think that's exactly what they might do Dick. You know one of my favorite plays in this game is set up potentially tonight. But if they walk uh, Amherst as well and load them up it would take it away and that's a squeeze bunt to win it. But with the bases loaded in the yeah. infield in, then you've got the force at the plate, and that's right. too tough. So Wallace does walk. Now let's see what they do with Amarista. I think they're going to walk him too. I think so too. He hasn't been announced into the game, and now he is. Andrew Kastner running for Wallace. That's a just in case there might be a play a force at second you got a little more speed there and with a left handed batter Amarista introduced into the game Bochi is going to, uh, to go to the left hander Josh Osich time September Last night the Giants used 10 pitchers in nine innings. Padres got by with only four. Tonight the Padres have used eight pitchers. And now this is the sixth for the Giants. Well as the left hander Osage comes in we've seen him already this year. We saw him last night in the seventh inning two thirds of an inning. A good live arm from this left hander. He walked one he struck out two. I can get it up there to mid to upper 90s. Now, if you're Bochi, do you bring in a left hander to intentionally walk a left hander? You wouldn't think so. I huh? wouldn't think so. So he's going to play the percentages. 
knowing that uh, Pat Murphy doesn't have a lot of right handed help there on the bench. He's used Solarte. Decker's gone. He's got Rocky Gale and Austin Hedges, the two catchers, but neither known for their batting prowess. Well, the way I look at it is Osage's numbers against lefties, and you got a guy coming in cold off the bench. Sure, Alexi Amaris is probably in the cage getting hot, but still. Lefty like Osage with his stuff. You would think that he would pitch to Amarista. And again, Murphy would have the option of pinch hitting for Amarista, right. bring in a right handed batter, but yep. the two batters from the right side available are the two catchers, Gale and Hedges, and both are hitting well under 200. It's just uh, if, if games go extra innings after September, it's conceivable you'll see ten pitchers. Absolutely. Now the hard throwing Osage. Amarista hasn't seen a lot of game duty of late. Hitting 211 on the season. 27 runs batted in. This will be his 300th at bat. All right, Alex, you got to think the opposite way here. Uh, the season, he has struck out once out of every four times. Infield tight, hitter's delight. So they don't have the force at home plate. And the ball not hit hard between the infielders, and you've got good speed bringing home the win. Going on contact, wild pitch, pass ball, sack fly. Jankowski and Spangenberg, the Padres' fastest runners. Here we go. Way outside. Whoa. 96 on the fastball. Osic pitched two thirds of an inning last night, gave up a walk and a hit. You know, I really love the idea of Travis Jankowski on third base with that speed contact. Infielder's got to glove it, throw it accurately for a play at the plate. If they elect to go that way. Fly ball yeah. to deep left field. That's plenty deep. And Amarista has given the Padres another walk-off win. It's five to four. Veritable copy of last night's victory. A walk-off win. Jed Jerko with a base hit to win it by the same score, five to four. And tonight it's Amarista delivering a long fly ball single to get Jankowski home, and the Padres with another one-run win. Oh my! To the delight of 31,137 Padre fans. What I like about that at bat is that Alexi Amaris, the first ball one, and a nice easy swing. Outer third, he did not overswing. Put the barrel on it, points to his teammates. Come on, everybody, let's celebrate. How about that? The Padres out hit on the night 13 to 5, or 13 to 6 now with that base hit, and come away with a 5 4 victory. Jankowski scores the winner. And Amarista gets a lot of love. And he's now with uh, Chris Button. Well, thanks so much, Dick. Alexi and Marisa. Jose Valentin's going to translate for me. You go in there to pinch hit. What were you looking for off Osage? In that situation, what was you looking for? No, pues, solo estaba en and, pues, I just was preparing for any situation. And, pues, gracias a Dios que me tocó esta. Y, pues, tomar el buen swing. He was looking for a pitch that he can drive. And uh, he knows that. Uh, Outfield's kind of playing shadow, and everybody's kind of playing shadow. So he was trying something to lift it, kind of hit ball hard, and uh, got the pitch to do it, and he did it. I know you haven't had the most playing time here recently with the expanded rosters. What kind of pressure did you have to want to produce in that one at bat that you got? I said that hace mucho que no jugaba, que si sentía alguna presión en su momento. No, no, no sentía ninguna presión. Solo estaba estaba concentrado 
en un turno que, que, que me diera el mal y pues gracias a Dios tocó en esta situación. You said that, I mean, he understands he hasn't played too much time on it, but he just go up there, you know, with a lot of confidence. You know, he just want to do up there, be ready anytime they need it. And, uh, you know, he was happy to come through today. I appreciate it. Go celebrate. Thank you. Guys. So Craig Kimbrell gets his second win in as many nights. He's now 4-2, and two, and the Giants continue their woes on the road. That's in the last seven road series. They've lost six and split one. The final 5-4. Here's Mike Pomerantz. Nice job by the Padres tonight playing spoiler. When we see you on the postgame show, we'll have another recap of this fantastic walk-off, and we'll talk about Scott Miller's thoughts on the American League West and East races in moments.